for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snow with the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a full breakdown video for you guys today. If you guys don't know, I try to put out a full breakdown video of an offense or a defense every single month and that's what this video is today this video is really meant to show you guys what you get if you get my ebooks obviously the ebooks are broken down in a format where there's like written descriptions and setups and stuff like that and also has links that take you directly to the play this here is just a combination of all those links i don't plan on leaving the saints i'm pretty sure i'm gonna be in the saints for a long time so if you want guys want to see more offenses like this as always hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that let's go and get right into the video next up we have the counter y just a good run play. Uh, most people will expect inside zones, but this run play going in the opposite direction should throw your opponent's user off quite a bit. And it's a pretty effective run. I mean, here we have, uh, you know, the pulling blocking just works out really well. It's a good five to 10 yard run every single time. And it's something that's just good to have uh, when most people try to shoot gaps for inside zones. That looked like a run commit or something. But when most people try to shoot gaps for the inside zone, you can really just take it the other way. You can see the blocking is pretty successful and, and it's pretty consistent. Next up, we got the flank of drive. Start off with cover two. So I'm just gonna go ahead and motion this guy in, put the B route here on a 10 yard out route. And then I can just basically put the A route here on a drag so I got an easy check down. The X route here is gonna get open right over the middle once he splits the safeties. Can be a good play, won't always be a one play touchdown, but it's definitely a good play. You could also, I mean, if you put the RB route here on the 10 yard out route, um, that works a little bit better because I really don't want uh, that, that 10 yard in route pulling the safety into that area because ultimately that's really best is to get him out of that area. And then you can see here we can get a little bit of a better throw and a little bit of a better catch and run. A little bit of a faster receiver I might be going. Next up we'll pick cover two man. So same setup, just put the RB route, just flip the RB route to a 10 yard out route. That's really all I gotta do. You don't really have to motion in the X route either. As you can see, it does a better job of getting past the cornerback if you just leave him out there. And it can be a very big play, including a possible one-play touchdown if you get a good catch and run. Next up, we'll do cover three. Against cover three, you're not going to have a lot of pass pro, but if you have a mobile quarterback, you can survive in the pocket long enough to make a one-play touchdown out of this. Put the Y route on a streak, put the X route, just leave the X route alone, and he'll basically um, just cross the field quick enough to the point where you can get a one-play touchdown. But like I said, you don't really have a ton of time in the pocket. You don't have a lot of pass protection. But it is a one-play touchdown against cover three as well. Next up, we'll choose cover four regular. Same setup. Same setup, just motion this guy in, put the running back on a streak. And you'll see how this X route can really split the safeties. As long as you bullet and pass it up and away, you can get over the top of a cover four defense through the two safeties. It'd probably work a little better if you put the RB route on an out route instead of an in route. That will help split those safeties a little bit better. And then you can see I can just get right through the middle there. It's just a bad transition. I mean, that wasn't a one-play touchdown because I really get the best throw. But you can see I can split the safeties very easily as they try to pass the receiver from one zone to the next. Next up, we have the inside zone. It's just the best inside run play, or really one of the best run plays in the entire formation. Nothing really to it. If your opponent gets a little bit too uh, pass heavy on defense, just hit him with his inside zone. He could get easily five to 10 yards of carry with this run. Next up, we have the mesh. It's another play that can really get open against a lot of different things. All these drag routes are very good um, against man coverages and most zones. It's really a good short yards play. Things like this are good around the around the red zone and stuff like that. Next up out of the gun bunch, we got the speed dig. It's another play you can really run out of just about any against any defense. I'm just gonna put the A route on a streak, the B route on a drag. And we're going to have a deep crosser and a shallow crosser that works in just about any defense. Here it looks like we have a cover one man or a cover zero man. You can see how that route just gets right across and beats that for an easy one play touchdown. But this is really about the RB route and the B route. The uh, the X route's a really good uh, check down as you got another crosser, although I don't know what's up with that pass. I don't know if that was a cover three or what. It looked like cover three. It looked like another one play touchdown. This play is a very good play against cover three. We'll do that again and we'll see how, you know, we have our check down with the drag if we need it, but the RB route 
it is a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. So you can see how quickly that gets across. No real issues there at all. Very easy one play touchdown against man and cover three. Also has success against cover four. We'll have to back out and find a cover four drop. Same setup, blocking the running back. It's helpful, but it's not, you know, it's not a necessarily a need. So I'm gonna do that one more time from the hash mark to the open side of the field this time. And now you can see how this guy here can beat that cover four, although I probably should have safe caught. I'm not sure if he was in bounds or not, but still a very good play against cover four. Next up we have the bunch trail. It's a good man beating concept. Pretty much everything on this play beats man coverage. Uh, the B route here is probably the most successful as far as a deep route, but they all are man beaters. Next up we have the verticals. Start off with cover two. Against cover two, just put the RB route on a streak and then motion out the B route. You can put the A route on an out route or you can put the X route a drag. I mean, I put him on an out route and then put the X route on a slant for a check down. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm really just trying to, to isolate this wheel route outside here for a big catch and run. The tight end was open over the middle too. They both get open against cover two. Well, that's not even a tight end. It's Quez Watkins now, so even better. But the A routes are pretty good check downs. You can see he's open underneath. I mean, I could take that. I mean, it's, it's, everything's open here. You know, I mean, cover two is not a very good defense right now in man 22, but it's really easy to attack outside like this. Let's go ahead and let's hit the, uh, the Quez route real quick because it is there. As long as I can body that, you can see right there. I mean, it's, it's not as open as the outside routes are, though. Has a similar effect against cover two man. Do the exact same setup. And you'll see he just runs around the potential jam. Although the um, the tight end was open too again. I mean, I was watching the tight end when I threw that ball. But you can see everybody's open the same way. Against cover three. It's not as good. But if you motion this out, a lot of times the, uh, the A route will just get open right at the seam. That's probably the best thing you can get out of cover three out of this right now. You can put the X route here on a comeback once again and put the uh, the A route on a streak and the B route on a drag, similar to another play that I put out. And the RB route should get open across the field again, although I don't know why I didn't catch that. I guess it was just a bad throw. I mean, I said good accuracy. We'll do that again. And we'll get, uh, we'll get that playoff at some point, why is he not catching this? Well, you can see it's gone. Alert! Alert! We'll do it one more time. Just because it lets me let's go do this one more time like i said that that rb route is just streaking i don't know why i didn't catch any of those next up we're gonna do cover four exact same setup should be the exact same results although this takes a little bit longer because you got to wait for this guy to pass it's to the point too when i get that pass lead that i might not actually be able to catch it in bounds but we'll do that again there, just wait till he crosses that safety and then boom, there we go. That'll be it. If he catches it, yeah, there we go. So we got an easy one play touchdown against Cover 4 regular as well. Except with the Z spot and go. Very similar concept. I'm just going to streak the X route. If the A route gets open right away, I'm going to take it. If it's a man cover, just wait a little bit. And then typically this route will be open above it, which is the RB route. So it's really a two read uh, play. Uh, between the A route, which is typically only a zone beater, and the X route, I'm sorry, the RB route, which is a man or zone beater. Next up, we have the Z spot. It's another play that can work against just about any zone coverage. The B route here, I'd put on like a slanting check down. But at the end of the day, if it's a zone coverage, I'm reading the A route first. If it's there, I'll take it. If it's not there, typically the B route will be open above it. 
I'm sorry, the RB route since I'm on this side, but ultimately it's going to be the same thing. Here we got a man coverage. Like I said, I wait for that RB route to get open, and it looked like he had position, but we still got that over the top. So man or zone, that route should get open. It's just about anything except for cover four. Next up, we have the middle high low. Start off with cover two. I'm going to motion this guy in and put him on a streak. I'm going to put the A route on a drag. That's pretty much it. The Y route's going to be the read as he's pretty much going to get around that cover two cornerback. Although there he got bumped a little bit. Still made the play. Uh, might have to wait a little bit longer before making that throw. You can always motion across the tight end too. So that you can leave that, uh, that drag out there doing what he's doing. And then that will also create this guy getting open um, over the drag. So the drag can actually help against cover two. There's two ways to run it. Next up we got the quarterback draw. Anytime your opponent stretches their defense too thin, just hit him with a draw play. You always have a run play even though it's with the quarterback. A lot of people think that, you know, they see an empty backfield and the run's not an option. But you can always hit him with this run play. It's a very good run play. It's still as good as it always was as long as you have a mobile quarterback. Next up we have the Y corner. This play here, you just got to motion in the X route, put him on a streak, and then put the A route on a drag. You can do anything you want with the other routes. But the Y route should get outside of just about any man or zone. As you can see right there, that's pretty much, I don't even know what it is. It doesn't matter. This route will beat just about anything. That looked like a man coverage. I tried on everything, including cover four. It worked the exact same way on all the defenses. You can see here, just as long as you wait for that guy to get outside the cornerback, bullet and pass lead away, he'll beat every single defense in the game. Next up, we got the Saints drags. Just going to motion this guy in here and put him on a streak. I'm going to block the tight end. Uh, it's pretty much all I have to do. You can put the RB route on a streak and then put the B route on a drag. That's probably going to be your best setup. The X route here can really get open over the middle as well, although typically your running back doesn't catch the ball very well, so that's not your best look. But the best look is going to be the uh, the Y route. The Y route's really going to get open. I'll go ahead and put my tight end on a streak because he's probably better at catching those deep over the middle balls. But at the end of the day, I do right, like having that extra blocker, and then this is going to be the big play, an outside throw above the cornerback outside the safety. I'll have to do bullet and pass lead away. Also has success against cover two man. Exact same setup. I could always put the X route on like a you know zig or something if I want to as well. Although I kind of need somebody pulling back those safeties. And you can see how he's going to get outside of this as well. Uh, although I safe caught that just to make sure that I caught it. It's not always going to be a one play touchdown. But it definitely has that capability. Also can beat cover three. Motion this guy in. Put him on a streak. And somehow this Y route get outside of this cover three zone the same way which it really shouldn't do as you can see it just beats it right over the top so that's new it would always be cover two and man but now it beats cover three very easily Let's go now. Hurt, hurt. so cover four same setup it's gonna get outside of that cornerback the same way might not be a one play touchdown but you can see how I can definitely get outside of any defense man or zone also beats cover four match Gets outside of cover four the exact same way. I'll block my tight end this time. Just give myself a little extra, a little extra protection. But you can see how he beats that the same way. As we get the catch, but you know we can get a one play touchdown with a faster guy. But you can see we get past the cover four corner, which is all that matters. Next up, we're going to pick the Saints fork. On defense, we're just going to go uh, random play. So this is an updated version. I already put out a uh, the version where you put the X route on a slant. Uh, this version, I'm going to put the X route on a fade. And a lot of times, I'll also put the A route on a streak. Sometimes, I'll even put the B route on a fade just to pull back uh, as many routes as possible because the Y route and the RB route are the two best routes. Now, this play here, you can see how the Y route can get open right off the line. If there's not somebody right in front of him, you can basically throw that before he cuts inside. And you can get a quick throw pretty much every single time. But ultimately, this uh, play is going to be best uh, if you wait for the Y route to turn back inside. A lot of times, you can get inside of man coverage there. That was a man press. Not necessarily going to have the same results. But if it's a man coverage where he's playing off, you, a lot of times he'll get open. So we'll have to look for that look. This here looks like he's coming in on a blitz. So this is another scenario um, where he actually wasn't coming in on a blitz. But you can see in cover three, which is what that was, when he cuts back inside, he finds space in the seam. He'll do that in pretty much any zone coverage. It really just depends on when you throw it. I really should get the user off of this guy. I'm going to put him right here. But this here looks like a cover four. It'll be the same result. Once he cuts inside, you can see he's right in front of the safety for a face catch. 
that route, just like the RB route from the original video, will get open against just about any single defense in the game. This looks like a cover two, if I had to guess. This, I could throw this right off the line, or I could wait till it turns back inside in front of the safety, and you can see it gets open pretty much every single time. The only thing that really has trouble with is man press, which we already saw. This could be some sort of man press variation here, as you can see, it gets in the way. Like I said, if I wait till it turns up field, bullet pass lead outside, that was a cover three. He's going to split the uh, cover three cornerback and cover three safety. This year definitely looks like that press option uh which like i said can struggle with because right here you can see how it gets outside of it you can still get inside of it if you wait if you wait long enough he will come back to it so as you can see even with the press there i still did beat that i might have just threw the ball too early the first time so this second setup to me really is best um for you know attacking the other route uh deep as you can see right here he's gonna get right into that scene there sometimes you can catch and run and go up the field with that like there i'd kind of face catch it and kind of high throw it a little bit but you can catch and run and go right up the field. This looks like another cover three. The A route, when I'm streaking it like this, is a very good cover three option as well. As you can see, there is space between the seam and the other side. So you have a lot of different areas to attack um, with this play, with this new setup. Right here, it looks like we have a cover four. The A route could get open over the middle of that cover four. You can see there we get sacked. I was actually waiting a little bit long for that Y route. But that Y route, once he comes across that defender, he will get open once again. So let's go and let's watch the replay. Because it looks like a man zero. Maybe I didn't pick it up. But once he cuts across this guy right here, I can easily throw that and get in and get a completion because I have inside leverage. Whenever I have inside leverage, it's, it's going to be a complete pass. Next up, next up we have the Saints fork. This can work against any defense. There's a couple different setups. I typically just slant the X route, though. That's my check down. Typically against zone coverage, if it's there, or even man coverage, if he gets that type of head start, you can just take this guy right in the flat. So if it's a zone coverage, it's definitely going to be A. If it's a man coverage, like here looks like a man, you can do the, the RB route. He'll be open every single time. Those are probably your two most important reads. And then the slant is going to be the third read as your check down, which should always pretty much be there. Here we have a zone coverage, but we can still hit that RB route, although he was getting bumped around too much. It's a good cover three play to the tight end if you put him on a streak, which is something that I've noticed quite a bit. You can basically just hit him right at that seam. That's an option. Also works well against cover two. Next up, we got the Saints goes whip. Let's go now. It's another play you can run against any defense. I mean, I like the zig. Like, you have good man being routes with the zig and the A route. But at the end of the day, I want crossing routes. So you can do this. If it's man coverage, I suggest it. If it's not, though, if it's zone coverage, just put the, the, the Y route on a slant. Now you have two good crossing routes. And one of them should get open over the middle if your user's not adequately using the middle. It's just a good dink and dunk play. It's not necessarily the best play. Next up, we have the Slant Flood. I'm going to motion this guy in and put him on a streak. The Y route here should get outside of just about any man or zone if thrown uh, properly. As you can see right here, I mean, he's basically going to beat that. If I, if I, you know, man or zone, he should be able to get in front of that ball or around that defender. Going to do that one more time. This can also be a very good cover three play. Here we got that man press. Like I say, he's going to get outside of that. So that's a route you can really use against just about anything, man or zone. Next up, we have the double post. Start off with cover with uh, Tampa 2. So we're gonna put the uh, the B route here in a 10 yard out route, and then we're gonna block the A route. This should allow the Y route to be a very easy one play touchdown right over the middle. Um, I don't know why I keep getting these slow catch animations because it should be an easy catch and run, an easy rat catch, but I don't think Man 22 does that very well. So here we go one more time. Like I said, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's Jalen Hurts not being a smooth passer, but you can see how easy that is to beat over the top, over the middle. Next up, we have the PA slot cross. This play here, all you have to do is put the X route on a drag. Uh, if you have a zone coverage, the running back's a really good option. Like I, I like that option because he's obviously one of the bigger playmakers. Um, so that's something that you could throw to, but that won't, won't work against man coverage. So if you have a man coverage, you really have to read between the crossers. Here it looks like we have a man coverage, the deep crossers wide open over the middle because I think the press coverage missed. Uh, and then the drag will also beat man coverage. So pretty much uh, th that's going to be your read structure. If it's zone coverage, you read it from the RB route to the Y route, to the X route to the Y route. If it's a man coverage, you really only have two options, which is going to be the crossers. Like right here, we have that man coverage. Got away for that drag because the deep crosser was covered. And that's pretty much going to be your play. Next up, by the flex Y off week, we have the sluggo scene. Just going to put the A route or the X route on a drag. It really doesn't matter. Just as long as the, the B route here 
um, is going against a cover one cornerback, he's typically going to bite and be a one-play touchdown. So anybody running cover one, this is going to be the play to run. Except we have the fullback inside. This is just a good run in the opposite direction. It's not actually a fullback running it, but you already have the buck sweep going in one direction. This just goes in the opposite direction, completing the uh, the ability to run in both directions. So you don't want to run it when you have something like this. You typically want to switch over to the cross buck or vice versa because here you can see there's a defender just waiting in that hole. It's going to be a little more difficult to get through that. So it's really all about reading the defense and choosing which run play is best based off of the direction. Like here, you probably have a little more success with this, uh, although ultimately, like I said, we're looking for an advantage, which we're not really getting with these two defenses of looks uh, but when you have one you can see how explosive a run can be next up out of the gun split offset we have the halfback cross buck this is really just one of the better run plays in the formation um, it's t essentially an inside zone you have uh, one running back going in one direction which can be a little bit of a misdirection for the user but at the end of the day it's just a good inside run you can see it's it's good for a good five to ten if you bust through that first level maybe you can get more but it's a very uh, consistent inside run play as I just picked random you know defenses here you can see we're getting a very consistent run output against random defense I don't even know what I'm looking at except we got the halfback slip screen if your opponent starts blitzing too much, this is a good play. The RB route's good against zone, uh, but this is really going to be all about the screens. You can see right there, we just get it out in space. Uh, that's probably going to be your best bet against man, that, that looked like a man coverage there. So if it's a zone coverage, you do have the ability to hit the RB route. Um, which like right here I have so I don't have to force it to that uh, to that underneath to the to the screenplay I do have a second option if the if the users there or if the blockers don't pull out or something like that Which happens a lot so plays like this I can deal with I'm not really a, a huge fan of screenplays because I don't if, if I have to force it to the screen I don't like the screenplay this play has a very good secondary option it just has to be against his own coverage Although at the end of the day the best play is still going to be to the screen option uh, Just as long as your blockers set up. I mean a lot of weird things can happen in Madden's I didn't really run very well after the catch but you can see the screen sets up very well as well next up we get the paf slide this play here all i'm going to do is block the running back and put the b route on a 10 yard out route that can really be just about any defense i'm pretty much going to read this play from the a route back to the rb route then back to the b route the x route should be just about anything especially man coverage the a route is the only thing that beats the zone and zone only uh, but all these other routes here are man beaters so you can really just take your pick and like i said work your way from the running back back to the slot receiver back to the in route the in route will be last by the time you get to the in route pretty much everything will be cleared on the middle because that's pretty much just how the play is you can see right here that that route right there probably want a better receiver running it. that's like my fourth best receiver running it for some reason but you can see see how successful that is against man coverage you just want to have one additional blocker otherwise you might run into trouble here we go get that check down underneath the zone get to my running back try to make a move in space that's the only time you can throw to that guy it's against zone coverages but you're really going to end up throwing to the rb route and the b route the most next up we have the x dig Against cover three, the RB route's really good in the flats. Uh, cover three and cover four, that's going to be your best play in that scenario. You can motion him to the line to try to get him out there quicker. Although I am running it to the short side of the field. Like here, if you do it, like I said, I can get a little bit quicker out, catch and run. Probably want to run from the open side of the field, though. This is the short side. You also have a really good series of crossing routes with the A route and the Y route as the Y route and the, the A route really just kind of create a double drags look. And then your check down from that look would probably be the X route coming in last. But there's a lot of really good man beaters. The Y route, the A route, and the X route are all man beaters. Next up we have the corner strike. Against cover three, the corner strike, uh, if you just streak the Y route here, will get open outside very easily. It's a very similar formation uh, effect. It's a formations effect, not necessarily anything else. As you can see, I mean, it just doesn't cover that very well. And I'm not really, I don't know, I'm not getting the best throws. It's almost pulling me out of bounds. But you can see we can have that effect over and over. Also has that effect against cover four. As once, I, once again, like I said, it's a formational effect. So it's going to have it against, you know, it's the formation is doing another route. So it's the same thing as the previous play. Also has success against man. Same setup. And he's just whiffing. Ready? 
same setup, put him on a streak, and the X route is just he just gets cut off trying to trying to jam. As you can see, he just beats that. So very good play. It's pretty much any man or zone. That includes cover two. We're gonna pick cover two sink. This one here is gonna do a little bit better, but still not good enough as you can see. I mean, that was just a bad throw. Cover two zone is gonna do a little bit better, but it's still not gonna do good enough because it still angles to the weak area of the field. You got a safe catch if, I'm not, if you're not getting lower throws like I'm not. A little bit better accuracy or better quarterback would work very well. Then there's man coverage, cover one robber. It's gonna show it has the against man coverage. You have just as equal a chance as the Y route to be the play. Once again, because everybody's kind of getting jostled around. So this is one of the few times where this is gonna change who gets the ball. I'm gonna put the A route and the Y route on streaks or fades, it doesn't really matter. Here we have a fade. And you can see, I mean, I just throw it up there and he's getting past that. So, I mean, I, that was a fade. I think a streak probably does better. Like I said, we're streaking and fading both outside, both slot receivers. But you can see the, the jostling is really what gets that to happen. And then we have a very easy one play touchdown opportunity, although he had to stop to catch the ball again because Jalen Hurts is that much of an arm. Next up, we have the curl combo. We'll go and we'll pick the Overstorm Brave. This play here, anytime your opponent presses, which is really popular, especially when it comes to like the Overstorm Brave, anytime your opponent presses, all you have to do is put this X route here on a fade, or sometimes a streak. I'll go on and block my running back. Sometimes a, a streak is the way to go, but you're going to see how this fade will a lot of times get him over the top. As you can see, there he's wide open, but the pressure is going to force Jalen Hurts to throw some inaccurate balls because he doesn't do uh, too good a job with that. So we're going to do that one more time. Like I said, we'll just bring the user down, kind of recreate what most people do. But anytime somebody presses, just go to this play, put the extra out on a fade, and he will get around, like right there. He just runs right through it. And the reason for that is simple. It's because the way that this play set up, there's a, a pressing mechanic um, that uh, kind of works against it. I'll go to the replay. Basically, the reason this play works is because the guy getting pressed, the guy at the front of the line, is not the guy that's supposed to be covered by this guy. You know what I mean? He presses, but he's supposed to be covering 16. You see, once the, once the play starts, seven presses six, but he's supposed to be covering 16. So once the play starts, he gets off the press. Now he's trying to cover, and it's way too late. So that's why this play works. Um, the comeback route can work too, as you can see right here. I mean, they're still switching. As seven's chasing, it then becomes 20's guy, and it's just a, a whole confusion that gets him wide open. But this underneath route can get open as well. I'll block my running back this time and show you what happens if they don't press. The wire out will get open. If it's not done correctly, you can see the wire out's right there for the comeback. So both of those routes beat man coverage. It really just depends on what you're looking at. We'll go and bring our user down here once again, which is, you know, being controlled by nobody. Just to show you one more time how easily this play uh, can get gone. As you can see, it's just a lot of jostling. And then this guy's just wide open streaking down the field for an instant touchdown. Now, I have had success with this play against uh, cover three in press as well. So let's go and let's pick cover three. If somebody makes the mistake of pressing in any defense, really, it has a similar effect. So we'll go and we'll do that one more time. You can see how the, y, the X route gets over the top once again, although it's much less convincing, but we can still get a one play touchdown. So any defense in press just should have success. Next up, we got the drive H wheel. Start off with man zero blitz, the Overstone Brave. But this play here, all you gotta do is streak the X route. And you'll notice how the, the, the Y route gets in the way of the receiver or of the uh, defender covering uh, the streaking receiver. I'm going to go to the replay just so we can watch what happened there. But, uh, but yeah, he basically just, you know, sets a pick and that's gonna get this guy open, which will happen uh, more often than not. So very easy one play touchdown against man zero. Next up out of the stack wide flex, we have the drive H wheel. Easy play against cover two. Just streak the X route. 
wire out's going to get open outside of it. That's going to be the same against pretty much any man or zone, to be honest. Against cover three, do the same setup. But if you motion this guy out, he'll steal yards in the flats. Keep it to the short side. That's a really good route to cover three. You don't have to motion him out to have that effect either. But if you streak that X route once again against cover three, the Y route here is just wide open again, just like cover two. Like I said, any zone coverage is going to do that for the most part. Will have a good effect against cover four, though. As you can see, beats that outside as well. It just really follows. Everything's following that streak. They're too tight. They're too close together. And then cover four drop. It's going to get dropped the same way. Haha, -ha, because it's the same route, the same defense. I don't know. I didn't catch it. But you see it gets open. I'll do it again. So I'm just bullet and pass leading the second that that cornerback chases the streak. It's really that simple. And it'll do the same against any man coverage. We'll do cover two man just because, but it's going to work the same way. Cover two man is probably the best man coverage to cover this round. It still doesn't cover it. So covers just beats about any defense, any defense in the game. When it comes to the drive H wheel running back, you can really throw a quick out to the running back and get a very big play. Even if the, they're man aligned, which on that particular play they weren't, you could still have a lot of success in the flat with this because it gets open instantly. The, the, it only gets covered if it turns up field. The man coverage will eventually catch up, but if you do it like this, it will get open instantly. You also have the X route out here, which can get open as well, although that one is a little less um, obvious. And it's not necessarily a guarantee, as you can see, the cornerback here. You really have to wait for him to get outside the cornerback. The speed out route can be a very good route against man. But like I said, it's a little bit iffy. It really depends on who he's going against. And then obviously the running back works every single time. Like I said right there, sometimes if he doesn't bite, he can break on that and be a problem. So to me, the best route on this play is easily the running back to take against man coverage. Because you can see, I mean, even like I said, even if he's man line, I do it a million times online. He does not get covered if you throw it instantly. You have to throw it right away, almost like you're pitching it out. And not look, before, he, before he crosses the line of scrimmage, to be honest with you. You can see right here, you can get some really big plays, especially if the user forgets to cover the running back, which a lot of people do. For this next play, I want to make sure I have my fastest receiver in the, uh, the lead receiver spot. So we're going to pick that again, and we're going to go with the fade out. On defense, we're going to go cover three. So we're just going to put the X route on a comeback and streak the A route. And that should be enough that this Y route here gets open over the top for what could be a one-play touchdown. It's it's a it's a tight window throw, but there's not a ton of cover three one-play touchdown beaters in this particular uh, formation as I'm messing everything up here. Um, but yeah, this is this is your, your best bet. You could also try a comeback route as you can see, this this just gets the quarterback to hesitate just long enough, that comeback route just long enough that if you time the throw correctly, you can get a one-play touchdown with this play. Next up, we got the fade out. Start off with uh, Tampa 2. I'll we'll move this ball to the open side of the field here. This play here, if you don't want to make any motions with the running back, you can just put the X route on a streak. And you will have an opportunity to the Y route, although it's not going to be as big an opportunity if you motion out the running back. As you can see, I can make that play. But if I motion in the running back, if I put him on a streak, motion him over twice, motion him to the left, and then motion him to the line, you'll notice that it changes how the cornerback reacts. I also find it's best to put the X route here on just a five-yard out route. And that, that cornerback will drop down a lot quicker, giving you a much bigger catch-and-run opportunity outside of there went out of bounds a little bit but this is very easily capable of a one plate touchdown i don't think you even have to, to change the x route to be honest i just feel like that's probably the better way to go as you can see here, i can pass lead inside a little bit more maybe if i had quez watkins running that that might have been a touchdown but uh, but there's definitely um, more opportunity if you run the play this way i'm pretty sure i could probably throw the rb route too but i'd much rather throw outside I said I could probably get it right over the middle there to the running back as long as they don't have a deep middle safety, which a lot of people will make that adjustment. Also has success against cover three. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick fade out again, cover three. 
Against cover three, though, we're just going to put him on a um, on a comeback route. That's all you got to do. Run from a hash mark once again, because once he gets to this point, you have to bullet and pass lead outside. And that's also very capable of a one-play touchdown. I'll go to the replay to show you what to look for. Because you're really just watching for the cornerback to, re to react to this route, which he's just basically pulling him inside. I mean, you can see the, the receiver doesn't really, really get past him. He just gets outside of him, and then he can bullet and pass lead away to get that separation. And this is going to work against cover three or cover four because the deep zone drops react the same way. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick cover four drop. Against cover four, you might want to smart route the X route just to get that cornerback to react a little bit lower. But you can see it still works the same way. It still gets over the top. It's just a, probably a little bit of a tighter window because you do have more deep cover safeties. Also has success against cover four match. So we're going to pick cover four quarters. Same setup, you can see it still reacts similarly, and you can still drop it in the in the bucket there. Next up, we'll choose that play again. This time, we'll choose uh, we'll choose some man coverages. We'll start off with the Overstorm Brave. This here, I find putting them on a streak or putting them on a fade um, can have this exact same success as you can see the uh, the receivers cross up the defensive backs once again, which is something that happens in a lot of plays in this formation. I don't, you can get this animation from a streak or a fade, but I find a fade probably works best. But you can see that once again, they cross, and the two defenders just basically just get on top of each other and get in each other's way, and eventually the inside guy gets a free release. So you're not always going to get that, but you know, keep a lookout for it. Once again, put this uh, running back into a check and release is another good tip. Here we go. You can see they run into each other again. By the time that cornerback gets off, it's just a wide open, easy one play touchdown. So any man cover zero should really take, uh, you know, should take care of that. Next up, we'll pick uh, cover two man. Against cover two man, you got a couple different options. You can do the trick where you motion the running back over, put him on a streak, and then put the X route on a zig route. And a lot of times you'll get an animation that looks like this, where this guy is just wide open in the flat. Because they kind of bump into each other once again, which is kind of, you know, always the uh, the trick when it comes to this formation. And I'll do that again, just to show you that it's not uh, it's not a fluke. They get in each other's way, and you can get a get a big play that way. You can also do that exact same zig route, put the A route on a streak, motion in the B route. And you'll get um, you'll get an opportunity going the other way. Once again, you're gonna you know you can split the safeties. Probably want a little bit of a faster receiver there doing that, but you can get a one play touchdown going that way as well. Could also use your that uh, that same concept with cover for quarters. So I'm gonna put the X route on a on a slant. I'm gonna put the running back on a check and release. I'm gonna put the A route on a streak and a motion in Brown. And against cover for quarters, as long as we can buy time in the pocket. The B route here will get open over the middle for a potential one-play touchdown. We'll call that a touchdown, but you can see how you can split the safeties the same way. So that gives you really two one-play touchdowns against cover four in this formation. Next up, we got the fade out. I'm going to put the B route on a drag and I'm gonna put the X route on a streak. That should be enough to get the Y route over the cornerback and outside the safety for a very big play, if not a one-play touchdown. Next up, we have the quick base. Another good run play if your opponent's getting a little too pass heavy on defense. That's all it really is. But at least this moves the marker. It's going outside more, where the previous play was more of an inside run. This one here, it's it's potentially to be more of an outside run. Although the formation I'm I'm, I'm looking at really seems to be tightening and shifting up and stuff like that. But like I said, it's a good run play. It's also a very close play to it by the slip screen. This A route gets open quick enough that you can make this the read, but at the end of the day, it's all about the screen, and it's a good um, thing to mix in. The zig route also gets open pretty quick if your opponent's running a lot of man, so you can use either one of these plays. Next up, we got the inside zone. 
If people get too pass heavy, you just hit them with this inside zone. That's really all there is to it. This is a very pass heavy formation, so you're going to have a lot of opportunities where opponent might really come out in some gap heavy control defense trying to stop the pass, and then you can just hit them with an inside zone. Typically getting, you know, maybe 5, 10 yards, something like that. See right here, that was a double safety blitz, and we're just blown right past that. So you're definitely going to have opportunities for the inside zone. It's the best run play in the formation. Next up, we have the levels. So I'm just going to block my running back here. And you'll notice that there's a lot of good man-beating concepts, especially when it comes to the Y route. It's essentially a drag, but it doesn't open up like a drag, so the user won't typically be there. Um, but you have a lot of good options here. You really have, like, the A route. The Pretty much every route here beats man. The A route, though, you really have to make sure you have, a, like, a faster tight end than what I have because he's not going to break in front of that cornerback quick enough. So that's one of the few routes where I wouldn't suggest necessarily throwing it. But the B route here will get open in the break. Um, the, obviously, that's going to be your second best read because it's not over the middle of the field where the user will typically be. The X route will also get open, but he is over the middle of the field. So he's somebody that I probably wouldn't want to throw that and you can see he doesn't really break quick enough because the, the the speed of the pass rush is kind of forcing me to get out quick so i would say on this play here you're really going to want to throw to the y route which takes a little bit longer than the b route to get open or you can basically just hit this b route next up we got the pa read going to start off with nickel tampa two so i'll put the y route on a fade put the a route on a curl that's really all i have to do i mean i can block the running back uh, but you can see how this guy here is going to split the safeties. And it's going to be that way whether it's cover two, man, or zone. But I'll do that again. Like I said, the A route is a good comeback, is a good option against man coverage. As you can see there, if I hold that ball a little bit longer, we get a nice, uh, you know, easy one play touchdown against cover two. Next up, we'll choose cover four. Go to cover four regular first. This play works best on a short side. Uh, bomb, which is the um, hash mark to the short side of the field. All you gotta do is fade the Y route, put the A route on a curl again, and the X route here will split those safeties just as long as you bullet and pass lead up once he gets inside the, the free safety. We'll go to the replay to show you guys what to look for. Like I said, once he gets inside of this safety here. He's already past the strong safety, so you can see I'm already loading up. And that's going to be your one play touchdown because this sets up just to get enough to get him past that strong safety. Works against cover four match even better. We're going to pick that. Same setup. And we're going to get um, another, you know, this one here, we're going to get even more separation. As you can see, he just, for whatever reason, the, the both the cornerback and the safety chase that fade. Go to replay one more time. This fade route gets all the attention from both guys, leaving this guy just streaking wide open over the middle. I guess they expect the safety to rotate over and pick him up, but there's just nothing but separation here. Next up, we'll do cover two man. Same setup, fade the wire out. That's all you really got to do. And wow, we're really getting going there. I don't know what happened on the jam, but uh, it's going to work even with a less impressive jam than what I got, or less impressive release than what I got there. I'm not even going to go to the replay because you're not going to see releases like that every time. Um, this here is a little bit more realistic where he's behind still. And we're still getting that one play touchdown very easily. So, you know, same, th same thing as cover two, zero. And pretty much all man coverage is if you watch. I mean, they just they just get in each other's way, which is typical of this formation, which is why it's so overpowered, is that stack formation, is the receivers are so close together, the defensive backs just typically get in the way against just about everything. Also works against man zero. Same setup. Anytime the routes intersect like this, the way that the, the, they're basically just running on top of each other, you're going to get this look and you're going to get separation. Even with the safety turning into a deep safety there, we still get over the top very easily. You can keep that safety away just by checking and release the running back one more time. As I messed everything up here, I'm going to do that again. I don't know what's going on. I'm messing everything up. Like I said, check and release the running back. 
Got a good check down with the A route. And we got a very easy one play touchdown to this guy once again. So pretty much every you know play in this formation is gonna have that success. Also choose cover one man. Same thing, I'm gonna block the running back, but the same thing, fade the Y route. And we're gonna have similar success to the outside, although you can see, I mean, a little more speed would be nice. This isn't necessarily gonna be as uh, as simple, but if you get a good, you know, like right here, they get each other's way, get that pass lead outside. Very easy, won't play touchdown against cover one man, just as long as those cornerbacks bump into each other enough. Might be able to get that same success with the, um, I don't know what I did there. <laughs> I'm going to do that one more time. Let's see if they get in each other's way. I'm going to do that one more time. Like I said, there they get in each other's way. I know I got myself a big play. And, you know, I, I probably could have held that a, a second longer. Might have been a better thing, a better, better way to go. We put the A route. If you want to get rid of your check down, you can always put the A route on the streak. You can put the B route on that zig. Just to try to pull that safety over as much as possible. Because he's really the only guy that can come in the way once this receiver gets deep. Except we have the PA read. So I'm gonna put the B route here on a 10 yard out route. I wish I could motion him out, but I can't. So we're gonna put the, the Y route on a streak. And that's pretty much it. I'll block the running back. I'm gonna double team JJ Watt here just to be safe. And uh, this is pretty much gonna be the play. You can see we have plenty of time to throw. Very easy one play touchdown as he crosses inside because the streak pulls the safety back. Very easy one play touchdown against cover two zone. Works the same against cover two man. So we're going to do that again. Double team JJ. And we're going to need one play touchdown again. As you can see, he just cooks that inside cornerback and splits the safeties again. Next up, we have the Salem pivot. It's another really good man zero play. The A route here is probably going to be the best one, although Goddard doesn't appear to be quick enough to really run these routes too well. But you can see he does get open. The B route will get open too, but the Y route is the one that typically will get forgotten. Like the, if you hit that tight end a few times, your opponent's going to start using the tight end. Then you can basically just hit the Y route on the other side. So you have two really good man-beating routes, uh, and it really just depends on you know how your opponent uses. Like I said, we're getting Budabakers out there covered really well. But usually that's a much wider opening. And like I said, if you hit that tight end first, your opponent will start paying attention to that with their user. That'll basically just get the Y route open anyway. And then you can just basically run this play all game because you got multiple routes to get open. Next up, we have the Y sale. This play here is really, uh, you know, you split the field in half. I've got to move the ball to the center of the field because there's really good routes on both sides. The zig route's going to be best against man. The, um, the, the, the side that I typically going to start on, though, is going to be the right side. The running back is going to be a zone beater. The A route is going to be the man beater. It's really going to be that simple. Even here, like, the, like he drops down, I can still take the A route. So the A route's not just a, a, a man beater. But if I have somebody who's running a lot of man, I might just go straight to the zig. Here we got that tight end once again. Like I said, it's a very good route. If the but you're really reading the running back to the tight end, and you can really go to the other side too. Like I said, the zig route. If it's a man coverage like this appears to be, the zig route's typically gonna be good. Although they didn't do a very good job, but trust me, zig routes are great when it comes to man coverage. The check down is definitely going to be the in route as well. As you can see right there, not a very good reaction by number nine. Uh, but when the user leaves the middle of the field, that that's gonna be a route that typically gets open. Next up, we have the Z spot. It's another man zero play. This play right here, if you block the running back, the Y route really gets open real quick because the way the programming is in the game, they think that, I mean, they basically play it to the outside like they're waiting for him to turn outside. So if you throw it and pass lead inside, before he does that, you can see you can just get open right over the top and have a very easy one play touchdown against man coverage. Basically instantly open against pretty much any man coverage. Also works against cover one. 
It's the exact same setup, exact same play. The safety, though, can be over the top and give you a little bit of an issue, but that's about it. Still a very good play against cover one. Like I said, you're really just using the programming against itself as you bullet and pass lead inside. Like I said, you can get him up by touching if I can make this guy miss. That's the only thing, but otherwise, it's a very good play. Next up, we have the old one trap. Like I said, I don't know if this is the best inside run, but I definitely like this run. I think I like it more than the Owen Trap. You can see it's a very explosive, uh, you know, run. There's just nothing really there. This is something, anytime you have, I mean, this is not like something where you're choosing a hole. You pretty much have to have a hole right in the middle for this to work. Uh, but you can see this is another very good run from this formation. This is probably one of the best formations to start Madden 23 in, as it has a lot of really good run plays and pass plays. Next up, we have the bench. You can run this play just like this, but to me it's best to just set it up the same way I've shown a couple plays from this book by putting the X route on a streak and by putting the A or the B route on a drag. I'd say putting the B route on a drag makes the most sense. Uh, this is pretty much going to be the look. Your Y route is going to be just about any defense, especially this man coverage, which we're starting off with. So you can see how man or zone, that's going to be a very good route. You can go the other way though. If you if you think your opponent is using that side, you can just basically do the exact same thing on the other side. The drag is going to be there all the time. It's just a very good check down uh, with the crossing uh, drag route. And you could also set up some very explosive plays. Like right here, it looks like we have that man coverage one more time. Just another really good play. It's going to beat cover two, cover three, all that. I don't know if we might have a cover three here. We might have another man coverage as well. I'm not really sure, but we'll go ahead and we'll run it once it lets me run it. Looks like we're going to have a zone coverage this time. You can see once again, this guy beats it outside. That was a cover three. I got a bad throw, but you can see how that's going to get outside just about any zone coverage. It could be a very big play against cover three the same way the previous play was by streaking these outside receivers. Eventually, this X route here will be open once the cornerback fades away for easy bullet and pass lead away. You probably need a, an extreme speed advantage for this to work, but you'll see that once he f f basically covers that cross or just bullet pass lead away from the safety, and number 11 here, whoever's in your slot position or this receiver position should have space from the safety. Probably is the same way with the tight end, but I, I don't you know, typically go that route. Next up we have the halfback counter. Another very good run play, very unique. Uh, there's not a lot of run plays like this. Your opponent coming from this formation will typically expect an inside zone. Uh, they won't be expecting a counter run, especially not one that's as uh, consistently effective. Although there, I didn't let, my, didn't let my block set up. But you can see I still got about five, six yards. So this is something that you can really catch your opponent uh, with their pants down. This is one going to keep running in their blockers like I am. I'm not really using my blockers too well. I should probably be uh, not sprinting so much. Uh, until I actually hit that hole. So right there, boom, we finally do it right. And we get our biggest carry, a 15-yard carry. Next up, we have the inside zone. It's a very good run play. I'm not sure if it's the best run play in the formation. It's either this or the 0-1 trap. But uh, it's very consistent. I mean, oh, uh, inside zones are some of the best every year in Madden. Um, I typically want to find some sort of advantage here, which I haven't really found yet. But you can see, you can have very consistent inside runs. Even there, I got about seven yards. So this is something that should always be in your audibles and always in your arsenal, no matter what you're, you're looking at there. Although J.J. Watt obviously is being a problem, uh, which can happen. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got guys like that stuffing the run in the middle. But it's still a very good run. See right here, we finally get a very good run outside. It's just a slashing run. I'm pretty much hitting the sprint button the entire time time and just looking for a one cut hole next up we got the mesh spot this play here is really all about the drags uh if the drags are covered a lot of times um the 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 comeback route the little mini hook route over the center of the field will be open especially if a user middle linebacker leaves the center chasing the drags that'll a lot of times leave this guy just wide open although against the computer probably won't happen as much but i typically try to roll in the direction of the running back because that's really my reach this is going to be the uh, the x route there which i try to throw to even though i was talking and i didn't get it off uh, or the B route, which is going to be the comeback route that kind of just sits in the zone. Or if the third option, a lot of times, is going to be taken off with the quarterback if you have a fast quarterback. So that's really going to be the three reads. All right, next up out of the gun side offset T, we got to put the uh, packages to halfback one so we can get four wide receivers. It's going to be important. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick that. The play we're going to pick is going to be the PA shot seams. And we're going to start off with... Uh, cover three because this is now another this is now a cover three won't play touchdown as well as some of the previous setups that we did so cover three so for this play just motion across the y route i find it's best to put the b route on a fade 
to shorten up that uh, that wheel route. And the Y route here can be an easy one play touchdown. As you can see, it crosses there, um, and the streak and the uh, you know whatever that other route is just really seems to uh, to pull. Yeah, the A route looks like it's just a sagging off um, streak. I'm not really sure what you call that, but ultimately that setup there, streak or fade doesn't really matter. Um, will get the, uh, the 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 Y route across the cover three safety got the cover three safety really coming into play and then you really have a pretty big window if you throw it on timing it's a little bit easier for a catch and run let's go and watch the replay because there i didn't actually hit that with good timing but you can see once he gets to about here i mean you can bullet and pass it you got about you know 20 yards before that cornerback so if i threw it a little bit sooner i probably would have had a much bigger play <clears throat> this play can also work against cover four both cover fours we'll go ahead and we'll start off with cover four match pretty much the same setup just gonna motion this guy across do all the same things and then put the uh, the x route here on a comeback route and you can see now it's just a different receiver i mean if it works the same way only this time it's going to be the a route so I'll go to the replay on that. Like I said, same thing. Your opponent might even follow if, they're, if it's something you beat them with previously. But you can see, once again, the streak uh, really pulls away the two cover corners, giving you a much easier um, you know, pass to the, uh, to the A route here, to uh, number 11. Next up, we got the PA shot scenes. The setup is always going to be the same for this play. I'm going to motion this guy out, put the A route on a streak, and then I'm going to put the RB route on an out route uh, and the X route on a streak. This is going to be the look against cover two. We really have a lot of different options. I mean, the A route's an option, the, the B route's an option. Uh, every route's an option against cover two. I'll go and I'll show all of them. I don't really need the running back doing anything at this point, but like right here, I'm going to go for the Y route, who's going to be a really good, a really good play. As you can see, if I bullet and pass lead away from the safety, he can be a one play touchdown. I'm going to have to move the ball or flip the play for the next one. Uh, but the, the motion route that I'm motioning out is also a very good cover two play. If I want to use the B route as a cover two beater, the RB route on a route is important. You'll see how um, once this B route gets past the cornerback on bullet, pass leading up the field, he can be a one play touchdown, although once again, some sort of weird catch animation. I really get a good catch and run. Uh, but you can see how all these routes, I'll do this one more time before I move on to the next defense. You can see how all these routes are very successful routes. Uh, as we got the A route once again, like I said, I could force that. I like going outside here though. If I'm gonna go out, if I'm gonna attack cover two, I'd like to be as far away from the user as possible, and typically the outside receivers are there. This play also has a lot of success against cover two man. All the same routes from this setup will beat man covers the same way. I don't really need to change anything as that as far as that's regard. But the Y route's still gonna be the best one as long as I can um, you know get some time. That was not a clean pocket. The the B route will be the same way. I'm gonna move the ball over. We'll focus on either side here. This B route, once the cornerback comes down to jam, the B route will typically run around it. The A route's wide open too, by the way. Uh, we just need a good throw. As you can see, drops it over the bucket there. You can easily beat that for one play touchdown as well. And then I'll go ahead and I'll just focus on this tight end one time because the tight end you can see is really just getting a free release inside and really just being a very easy play. Although there, I think Buda Baker jumped it. But uh, you can see if I would have took my time, Let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's take our time a little bit. Make this play. Like I said, the A route's not even really getting jammed. And, you know, we can just bullet and pass lead inside and have a big play. If you have a really fast tight end, you could probably catch a one play touchdown up the middle with that as well. Against cover three, this play is not as good, but I have a really good cover three one play touchdown in this. So let's go and let's move this ball back to the original spot. You can have a one-play touchdown against cover three with this particular play. The Y route, for whatever reason, can get past this cornerback, but you can see it's a very tight window. So even though he does get past the cover three cornerback, it's not the biggest opening. And, I mean, I don't even have my fastest guy there. If I had uh, Watkins running that, it'd be even easier. But you can see it is a one-play touchdown against cover three. So if you're good at reading a defense... This is the best way to do it. Put this guy on a comeback. I would also streak the A route one more time. You're going to see how this Y route really just runs to a field of flowers as there's nothing out here. So this is the easiest way to hit a one-play touchdown against cover three with this particular play. Against cover one hole, same thing. 
When it comes to cover one hole, the only route that really is going to beat anything here is going to be the Y route or the speed out route, which is still pretty much there. I find it's best if it's cover one not to streak the X route because then they kind of get in each other's way. You can see um, you can have success just running this play against cover one as is and the X route there. Like I said, that's a, that's a check down that I can take for a big play as well as both routes on the left side are cover one hole beaters. Now, cover four, we're going to get cover four quarters. When it comes to cover four, don't motion out any of the routes. Just leave the B route in. And for some reason, the X route is now the route. It used to be the Y route, but I feel like they patched it specifically because of my setup. And then last but not least, we have regular cover four, which it beats also. Against cover four, if you have a fast enough receiver, you don't really need anything. To, you don't really need to do anything. But it's best to motion this guy out and put him on a comeback route. That's all you really have to do. Now you're going to see the Y route here once again. Will get outside of this cornerback. Although I don't know if I'm going to get the type of throw that I want. Although we did get the, we did make the play. This play here, um, it does a good job of getting over the top. But I probably would want to have my fastest receiver in the Y spot if I really want to get a touchdown. We might get one anyway. But you can see, I mean, there's definitely an opportunity there against cover four. Next up, we have the Saints drive out. Start off with Tampa 2. This is very similar to another play that I put out from this formation where all you have to do is streak the X route and the Y route will get open against just about any defense in the game. Uh, as you can see right there, it gets outside of the cover 2. Now we'll pick cover 2 man. Against cover 2 man, you'll have to streak that, uh, that X route again as the Y route here will get outside of it. You can see here, this might actually be a one-play touchdown. He got behind the safety. So, like I said, very explosive play. Can also have success against cover three. Against cover three, just put the A route and the B route on streaks. Block your running back. Motion out the X route and put him on a curl. Or a comeback, I'm sorry, a comeback. And watch how this Y route completely cooks the entire hemisphere of this field. And we're getting a very easy one-play touchdown. So against cover three, that's especially deadly. Next up, we'll do cover one hole. So all I have to do is put the A route or the B route on a streak. It really doesn't matter. Uh, motion this guy out here again if I want. I don't have to motion him out, to be honest with you. But it does make the uh, the man defender in front of the Y route a little bit further away. And it just to me, it makes the play a little bit better. But you can see, I mean, it's cover one man covers us better than most uh, defenses. I can do the streak as well. But I find that sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts. Here you can see it helps to get my man free. But sometimes it'll get in the way and my guy won't get free. So it's really up to you. Next up, we have cover four regular, which is right here. Come on, come on. I'm going to do the same setup. Just put everybody on streaks and then move this guy out. Put him on a comeback or a, com or a comeback route. That's all I'm really going to do. Y route's going to cook this safety again. Although Aguilar's not a very good route runner. It doesn't really seem to matter as he's, um, you know, he's just kind of rounding that off and not really running it clean. But it's still an easy one play touchdown. Next up, we got the Saints in. Really good cover zero play. Um, lots of really good man beaters in cover zero. I mean, you have your wire out here. It's a really good cover zero play, uh, speed out route. Got a one play touchdown against it across the field, though, with the, uh, I mean, the running back's good, but you probably aren't going to really get that much time. I would say, I mean, the drag's good, too. I would say that one of the best things to do instead of blocking the running back would just bring this receiver over and make him a blocker. But the B route here is, like I said, it's like an instant one play touchdown because of how much separation that route gets when it breaks outside. So you have a lot of really good uh, man-beating routes here. Going to go to the replay on that particular route because this is really the one that I'm going to attack because he's outside leverage and he just bites on it. The second he cuts inside, I can throw, and I probably already am. So yeah, the ball, I mean, I, I'm getting that ball out pretty much the second he gets inside release. So very easy one-play touchdown against cover zero. Next up, we have the Saints spot shake. Against cover two, I'm really just looking for the Y route. I really don't have to do anything. I can go for the running back too. They're both going to be open against cover two just as long as I have time. Uh, but you can see they get open over the top of the cornerbacks uh, on both sides. Next up, we got the Saint spot. This is another play you could really run uh, just about any against any defense. If I put this B route on a streak, the A route's a very good man beater. So whether it's man or zone, I should have success here. Although ultimately, I don't really want my tight end running any route of significance. So I could easily do that exact same thing on the other side. Uh, although ultimately, both sides are good. The, the, they're both going to be man or zone. If I do decide to do it on this side, though, as you can see, we have another man coverage and we beat it again. Uh, it's really best to put a drag underneath, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I'm going to 
to run it to the uh, to the Y side, I just got to put the B route on a drag. It's really that simple. I just want to have something as a check down and as a route to play right there. We get a we get instant pressure. You can have a cover three one play touchdown too if you motion this guy out, put him on a streak, and then put the X route on a streak. Probably want to block my running back, although that is my check down, so it's something that I got to think about. But the X route here can really be a big play, as you can see, as it goes up the seam. Might not be a one play touchdown all the time, but if I have more speed, it might be. Next up, we have the Y out halfback swing. Again, it's cover two zone. Just put the A route on a streak, and this is a very easy one play touchdown to the B route. All you have to do is get a little bit of time. You can see it's all timing. Bomb it up right through the, the two safeties. Just bullet pass lead deep. Cover two man is a little bit different as you're going to want to put this X route on a 10 yard out route. Drag the uh, the R, the Y route, or you can just put him on a zig. It doesn't really matter. But at the end of the day, it's pretty much going to be the same setup on the other side. Streak the A route. Now your B route is going to be the play once again. As you can see, it gets right over the middle, over the top for another easy one play touchdown. Next up against cover three, Sky. Against cover three, we're not really going to attack that crosser. We can. We'll probably do that in another setup soon. But ultimately, this is probably my best setup. Promotioning out the B route. Streaking, the, streaking everybody but the Y route and blocking the running back. And you'll see how eventually this X route here, once the cornerback bites, will be open up the seam for a potential one-play touchdown. If I'm my fastest guy there, he probably could be gone. You can also get that crosser down the field open if you motion this uh, this X route out. Put the Y route on a drag, put the A route on a streak, and then put the X route on a curl. Come back, my bad, come back. And then you'll see how the B route here can have a lot of success crossing the cover three one play touchdown as well. Against cover one hole, the Y route's a really good play. The A route's a really good play. You have a lot of really good man beaters on this play. And that is the shock H option out of the gun tray open. This play once again is available in all the playbooks shown on screen. I'm going to once again start off with cover one before showing all the coverages that this play can beat. The route I'm going to focus on is going to be the wheel route, which doesn't beat anything by itself, but can beat multiple coverages with a few adjustments. The first thing you can do is put it on a simple smart route, which will stretch it out and give you enough separation for a big play, mostly due to the same bump boost I went over in the previous play, but you get much more separation in different ways. The best way is to make sure that you are on a hash mark to the open side of the field and motion across the tight end. As you will see, it also brings in the X receiver, making it much closer and opening up a lot of different options for this play. As far as how to get the wheel route open better, all you have to do is put the X route on either a curl or a slant, and both will act to disrupt the cornerback in coverage of the fade route once again as either the curl route receiver or the cornerback covering him will completely get in the way of the defensive back, allowing the receiver to get wide open once again. Against cover zero, you have the option of blocking both the running back for more pass protection, as well as using the same motion snap trick to turn the tight end into a blocker as well. This play can also have a lot of success against cover two man, as the same motion can alter the cornerback's starting depth by making him back off just enough that the cornerback covering the same wheel route will badly miss the jam just about every single time, meaning the receiver will get wide open instantly outside. The best adjustment to make is put the X route on a fade to pull back the safety and the wheel route will once again get open against cover two man or zone for a big catch and run outside. Next up out of the tray wide flex we have the inside zone. It's just the best run play in the formation once again I mean you're gonna get a lot of opportunities whether it's man or zone. The receiver typically takes out the linebacker. If the, like right here, he's spread out wide because he's probably a man coverage over that guy. That basically gives me a lane. If he's in the lane, a lot of times the receiver will come in and take him out of the play. Right here, though, this is not really the best look because there's probably not anybody that's going to really pick up on that. That would not be a good look. But it's really a one-on-one. -on -one. You really just want to make sure that wherever that linebacker is, that that receiver has, has a clear path to him. That's really what's going to create your running space. So here you see he's out over the receiver. That'll give me an option, and I, uh, you know, just a nice big hole. And if he's in the hole, a lot of times the receiver will come out and basically take him out of the play. Next up, we have the PA crossers. So this player here, I want to do is motion this guy out, put him on a 10-yard out route, put the B route here on a fade. That's all I really got to do. Cancel the play action. The Y route is going to be the play. Just can't let him get too far across the field. You can see he's going for a one-play touchdown. That was actually a little bit too far, but once he gets to the center, I pretty much bullet and pass lead up. Also has success against cover two man. I don't really think you have to put the put Goddard on a speed. Or you can probably leave him on the speed out because it's about the same 10-yard route. 
but we got to put them out, move, motion them out there. You see here, the, the B route gets open right over the middle once again. Might not be a one-play touchdown against cover two man, but it's definitely going to be a big play. Then against cover three, against cover three, you got to make that motion, but you got to put them on a comeback route. Then you put the B route on, on a not a, a streak or a fade. It doesn't really matter. But the Y route, once again, will be the read. Once he gets across the safety there, and you can see I don't get a good throw, but he definitely has his space. Against cover three, you got to make that same motion, but you got to put him on a comeback route or, a, you know, whatever. Then put the B route on a fade, and you should have a very good cover three one play touchdown. Once the, the this route here gets across, once again, the Y route, you can see he was very wide open as the cover three cornerback is covering the actual uh, comeback route. Same setup works against cover four. We'll go ahead and we'll pick cover four. And it's going to work the same way. Typically, cover four, you have to run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field. But we'll go ahead and we'll try this one time. It's just so it doesn't take as long to cross the field. But you can see it still worked from this side. But from the hash mark to the short side of the field, it might work even better. Except we got man cover one. This year, just put the B route on a fade. That's all you really got to do. The Y route's going to get open uh, for an easy one-play touchdown. You can put the tight end on a drag or any number of things. But you can see this is a very easy one-play touchdown against cover one as well. Next up, we have the RPO alert screen. The A route's a man beater. For cover three, you really just want to throw it over here. You got good blocking. You'll get a good catch and run. Just have your fastest receiver in that spot if you're going to run this. If you have a lot of holes in the middle of the field, though, just hand it off. I mean, if you have a lane, it's best to just take that lane. But cover three or cover four, you want to throw it to the X route. Next up, we have the shock H option. This play here, I'm just going to motion across the X route, which is something I'll do quite a bit. Uh, then I'll put the B route here on a streak. I can put the A route on a streak, the X route on a drag, or the A route on a drag, and, and the X route on a slant. It doesn't really matter, but ultimately motioning that guy across is really what makes the most important part of this play. And then you can see this guy here is just angling away from where the uh, the cornerback and the safety are going to be able to cover. Didn't get a very good pass there, which isn't necessarily a surprise. This is kind of how Jalen Hurts does, but let's do that one more time. So it's kind of my fault. Maybe I didn't really throw it on timing. You can see right there. I can throw it a lot earlier and get a good catch and run. Because ultimately, you know, you got to account for the sidelines. Best to run from the hash mark to the open side of the field, too. Also has a lot of success against cover two man. Same setup. Get all of our checkdowns in order. And you can see the wire out there. He's already got outside leverage. He's going to just blow right past this guy. And we could get another very big catch and run. A possible one play touchdown if you get a good enough catch and run. Can have success against cover three as well. Same setup. Although this time you want to have the A route on a streak. Maybe even the X route on a streak. You can pretty much streak everybody on this play. Because I'm just trying to basically get this, uh, split this field. And there you can see it's just basically a, a, a nice seam beating play to the cover three. If I put him on a fade, it's a little bit better. If everybody else is on a streak. But the B route on a fade will get him a little bit more, um, you know, leading room away from that safety. So that's probably a little bit better than the streak. Next up, we got the inside zone. It's just the best inside run from this formation. You can make a lot of like fake motions and stuff to kind of mirror some of the pass plays. My favorite fake motion would probably just be to motion this receiver in. It can help a little bit as far as the blocking. I mean, sometimes he'll try to get on to like a linebacker or something like that. But it's just the best inside run. There's not a lot of great run plays in this formation. It's mostly a passing formation. Next up, we got the PA post dig shot. We we'll start off against Tampa 2. Against Tampa 2, let's motion in this route here. Put the B route on a 10-yard out route, and that's all we got to do. Cancel the play action really is up to you, but the X route here is going to get gone once he gets inside the free safety. Although there, I don't know what happened. I got good accuracy, but didn't get the catch. So I'll have to do that again. Like I said, motion this guy in just like the run play. Um, just to keep that consistent 
and we're going to see how this play here once again. Once this X-Rob gets in there, we're just basically bullet and pass leading up and away. And I, I kind of stopped running, to be honest with you. That's when I get the touchdown. I thought I had the touchdown. But you can see it's a very easy one-play touchdown against cover two. Against cover two, man, it's going to be pretty similar, but a little different. Same setup on this play, only we're not going to motion in the X route. We're just going to leave him where he is, and we're going to basically use that. And then once this guy crosses here, you can see we just have to buy a little time, but he's going to get inside of that safety uh, the same way with the bump. So this time, not motioning him in, he will cross that safety's face. And once he does, you just have to bullet and pass the inside at any point. I think I was probably still running at this point. But you can see, no, actually I got that ball off. Yeah, I guess once he gets inside, you can basically bullet and pass it away. Against cover three, I'm going to make that motion one more time. This time we're going to streak the, the running back. And then we're going to put the uh, the B route here on that 10-yard. I'm sorry, not a 10-yard <laughs> route. On a comeback route this time. And this is going to basically create what we want it to be. As the X route here is wide open again. Although I was under pressure, so I got a bad throw. But you can see how that cornerback is held down by this comeback route. So let's go ahead and let's do that one more time. Like I said, I'm going to put this wire out here on a streak. Just had to buy a little bit of time. Like I said, I'll wait for him to, to get loose. And now you can see even on the run, as I'm getting some good accuracy passes on the run, we're getting another one play touchdown against cover three. On this play, you have to run it from the hash mark to the short side of the field, motion in the X route, put the B route on a comeback route, and then you just have to buy time. Once Quez Watkins gets inside the free safety, just bullet, pass lead up, and you can see he gets past the uh, the strong safety for an easy one play touchdown. Next up out of the single back close flex, we have the mesh. I mean, the drags are very good routes. Uh, good man beater, good zone beater, is a good check down, but I'm going to put the X route on a streak, and against cover two, the B route here is going to be a very big play, although there I threw it a little bit early. Uh, that's a good cover two concept. Against cover three, we're going to pick cover through sky. We're just going to put that same X route on a fade. Now this time we're going to motion out Goddard here and put him on a streak. This is basically going to even out the formation. It's going to pull the safety across. But what I'm really trying to do here is get that cornerback to bite. And then you can see we, have, we can really get a good play. We're not necessarily going to have enough to make this a one-play touchdown. But we'll get a very good seam beater against cover three. The first play is in the I-form close flex formation. And this play can only be found in New Orleans Saints offense. The play itself is the PA tight end corner. This is a man-beating route. So on defense, I will start off with cover one man. This has two different ways to beat man defense. The first way is with this unique route that almost looks like a reverse corner route. And anyone who plays Madden 23 online knows how good corner routes are this year. The only adjustment that I'm going to make, whether I'm facing man cover one or man zero, is to put the X route receiver next to it on a streak or a fade to pull the safety back and you'll see just how glitchy this route is against man defense as the cornerback in coverage will always bite to the outside making this a very easy wide open throw against either man coverage with a streak pulling back to safety because these receivers start to play so closely together though the streak can also be an explosive route as the other route will often clear the way preventing the defensive back covering the streak from properly doing his job and letting this route get passed for a score also if you are running this against cover one man it is probably best to put the tight end on a streak to pull the safety back. Just make sure to pass lead away from the center of the field. This route concept works even better against man zero though as there is no safety over the top and both routes will get open the exact same way. The only thing you might have to do is change your blocking structure as blocking the running back will result in the free safety playing deep coverage which you don't want. So I find it's best to put the running back on a check and release as it will hold the safety and it's also best to put the fullback on a pass block as well. Next up, we got the stretch. It's going to be best flipped and run behind the receivers. That's typically how I like to run my stretch plays anyway. I find this is best to do that. Next up, by the I form tight, we have the PAY seam. Go, go random. Make sure your best receiving tight end is at the X spot, although I didn't do that. I just have whoever's there. Put the A route on a drag and the tight end or the um, the drag route really should get open against any man or zone, as you can see right there. Uh, he definitely got in the way. I mean, you could you could definitely kick this up a notch by motioning across one of these tight ends and putting him on a streak. This will also help, especially against zone coverages for the X route, but it won't help against man coverage. As you can see right here, it actually kind of changes the alignment. So if it's a zone coverage, motion him across and put him on a streak, but if it's a man coverage, just basically put him on a drag. This also has a lot of success against cover two. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to pick a cover two. We'll have to switch over to the, the uh, Tampa two here. Really don't need any adjustments, but I'm going to put the A route on a streak 
and I'm sorry, the X route on a streak, and you'll see how the A route can get open right over the middle between the two safeties. So as long as that doesn't get used, that's an easy option. You can put them both on a streak though, and really attack the B route, which is going to be a slightly better, uh, you know, area of opportunity based on the fact that the user won't be out here. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that one more time. Like I said, we're going to do a freeform pass. If you're using the old style passing system, it might not work as much, but you can see how you can really drop that in an area where the cornerback and the safety really can't put a play on the ball. Next up, we have the strong stretch. This is going to be best against cover three and cover four zones. This play can really work against anything. You just want to make sure you're going in the direction where you have outside containment from your tight end to their box defender. So here Goddard does have outside opportunity, even though he gets outside of it there. You can see that's still going to create the lane that I need, whether he gets outside of it or not. If he gets outside, I got to go inside. If he doesn't, I can go outside. Here's another good opportunity. I got to hope that this fullback can get out to the point where he takes away that cornerback. I can give myself a motion if I want to, although I feel like that can give away the play a little bit, but based off of some of the pass plays, which is also going to utilize that motion, it really doesn't. So it's really all just making sure that you have outside containment. And like I said, you do have some options. If you try to motion the fullback in the other direction, though, you can see it's completely different motion, so it doesn't really work out the same way. It's not really the way that I want to go. Um, it really only works to the short side. And you can see how you can have success with this. I mean, it's a very uh, stout run play with a lot of solid basically three tight ends because most teams don't even have a fullback on the roster anymore next up we got the halfback stretch halfback stretch once again i find it's best to flip it and run in the opposite direction you can motion across either tight end or uh the receiver uh you can see here though it does change the formation but i still feel it's best to probably have that extra blocker as you can see it basically just picked everything up and just blew open some holes you could do it without the motion though you just want to make sure you don't have a defender like this super wide to the outside you're never going to get outside of that in a scenario like this it's best to just run it the way that it is and now you can see you can have a lot of success um you know just running it as is so it's really a simple read you're really just trying to see you know do i have that edge like right here i don't really need the motion across a blocker at all because i really do have a pretty good shot at getting that angle getting that edge although i didn't get it that's the type of look that i'm talking about next up we got the inside zone this play here it's probably best to flip and run opposite the the receiver tight end as you can see a bunch of defenders are bunched up over there it's probably best to run it to the shallow side it's just a good inside run at the end of the day it's not an explosive run regardless to either direction i just find it makes the most sense to try to run away away from the most of the defenders as you can see on the next play we get a very big play because of that you can run it in the direction of the extra blocking but to me it's best to run it away from the extra defenders here's an opportunity for the slightly bigger hole to run it in that direction again and you can see we get a very big uh, very big hole so very good inside run has explosive capabilities depending on what you're looking at on defense next up we got the pa cross this play really works against any defense all you have to do is put the x route on the street you can motion them in to try to get these crossing receivers open a little bit faster but at the end of the day all you really want to do is pull back any outside zone so you can get these uh these underneath routes open below it you're really just going to work front to back a route to b route the a route should be there all the time unless it's like a hard flat like right here and then the b route you can see is just a deep crosser that typically will beat uh most zones most man just about anything both routes really should be man or zone depending on what you're looking at next up we have the pa sale start off with tampa two all you have to do is put the x route here on a 10 yard out route against cover two zone and the b route here will have a very big opening right up the middle just as long as you time that pretty well i don't know if i'll get a one play touchdown but you can see the opportunities there especially if you have a little bit more speed than smith has a 91 against cover two man just put the X route on a 10 yard out route and you'll have the exact same opportunity just as long as the B route doesn't get bumped too much. You can see he gets right up the middle there for a big play. Uh, but he got bumped around quite a bit. You need, might need a stronger receiver. So here, here he gets off pretty clean. You can see we get a much better uh, look. And we're getting a very easy one play touchdown because he didn't get bumped around too much by the defender. Against cover three, against cover three, you just gotta put the X route on a comeback and the A route on a streak. That's gonna be the really only difference. Play action to me is critical. And you can see how, once again, that comeback route pulls that cornerback down to the point where you just have to wait for the receiver to cross the free safety's face. Bullet pass lead away, get a very big play. Same thing can be said about cover four. We're gonna pick cover four or drop. Just put the X route on a comeback route and then the A route on a streak. That's all you really have to do. If you motion in this comeback route, it is helpful as it will pull the uh, the safety down so that this guy can get over the top, making it a very easy one-play touchdown. But you do need a pretty fast receiver to do this against cover four. 
Except we have the bunch dig. So I'll have a cover too. I'm going to motion out the B route here, put them on a 10 yard out route. And I could leave the A route because ultimately I don't really have the choice. It doesn't let me block him anyway. So the drag is probably the best thing. We can also put him in a zig or any check down you really want. Other than that, uh, I can block my running back. That's about the only thing I can block. And this is going to give me the most pass pro possible to, uh, to basically create this throw here, which you can see, um, you know, basically once he gets inside the free safety, it's easy to throw up for one play touchdown. Against cover one, man, we're going to motion over Goddard. The B route can be whatever we want it to be. I'm going to put the A route on a streak once he gets across, block my running back. Uh, this is pretty much going to be the play. I just have to wait for the X route here to get across the field. And I had to throw a little bit early because I forgot to slide my protection. But you can see how it gets across the play very easily. Except we have the FL drive. Against Tampa 2, the X route does angle in a way that you can bullet and pass lead and get outside of that safety. It's really all going to be about this one particular route. Against cover two man. Same thing. This X route here will eventually shoot for that spacing once again. It's going to be hard to get a, you know, one play touchdown with this because you really have to dramatically pass lead it and you really only have so much space to the sideline. But you can see I can get open against a lot of different things. Except out a single back bunch base, we have the halfback slash. This is a very good inside run. It's essentially an inside zone uh, that you're running in the direction of the bunch. Um, it's not as effective as an inside zone, but it is a good uh, good run play. One of the better run plays in this formation. You can see right there, that was like you know a, a way more effective run than the first run. You can flip this with the right stick because you are under center, but typically it doesn't help. It's better to run it in the direction where you have at least two tight ends blocking, which is what makes this a very, uh, a very good run formation as you do have that additional strength in the run game. Next up, we have the quick pitch. It's a good run play. Sometimes I'd like to motion this guy out just to pull the defender out a little bit, uh, spread the defense out a little bit. That's really the only option that you would really need to use. Um, this is not one of my favorite run plays. I might not have a ton of success running this, but it's a pro favorite run play uh, because a lot of people like to run these bunch sets. I don't really run a ton of bunch sets personally, um, but you can see it's one of the better outside runs you can have from this formation. Next up, we have the Seattle. Okay, break. Typically, I'm just going to put the X route on a drag and motion out the B route. This is going to be the best play. Against cover two, man, you can put the RB route on a streak. I'm sorry, against cover two, not cover two man, against cover two zone, that will give you a much better option when it comes to throwing to this B route over the top because essentially the streak is going to pull the safety in and the, and the drag will pull the or pull the cornerback down eventually. I mean, you could really do a couple different things here. If I wanted to work that route a little bit quicker, I could do the exact same setup and just basically put the RB route on like an out route. I could do something like this to give myself a much quicker result when it comes to pulling that cornerback down because that felt like I was waiting a little while. And if I do that, you can see I get a very easy one play touchdown as I get a big catch and run. But I find the first setup probably gives you the most options. Against cover two man coverage, we'll do that again. Pretty much going to be the same thing, only this time you don't really have to do anything. You just put one of these guys on a streak. I mean, the RB route here, I can put on like a drag or something like that. This here is going to be a much better check down. And then you'll see how this cornerback here, the receiver really just runs around him. It's a pressing formation, but based off the fact that he takes such a wide looping angle, I'll go to the replay whenever it comes up rather i'll go to the replay to show you guys that essentially just doesn't get pressed so here we go one more time like i said he tries to put hands on him but he just runs around him and that's what you're going to get pretty much every single time as he beats him to the corner next up we have the z spot okay ready it's another play that I really work and it's just about anything you just have to put the b route on a streak and all i'm really going to do is read the a route to the rb route 
Um, I can really put this other guy here on like a slant or something like that, whatever type of check down I want. But if the RB route's open, I'll take it right away. I mean, that's a man coverage, but he's leading out. I'll take that, get a nice catch and run. No questions asked. That should be just about any man or zone, depending on the alignment pre-snap. It's really more of a zone-beating uh, concept. As you can see right here, that looked like a man. He actually got out in front of it. Didn't quite get, uh, you know, that, that's not typically what I want to throw it against. I don't typically want to throw it against man. Only if I get the head start will I want to do that. Not a lot of times can happen if they're like running into people. Like here we get that that once again. Looks like it might have been a hard flat because he did react pretty quickly. But like I said, I'm starting by looking at that guy. Typically this concept works best against cover two zone though because the A route shoots right for that uh, spacing. So you can see right there, very easy play. You can easily get a one play touchdown if you have a fast enough tight end like a Darren Waller or something like that. Next up we have the bench. This play here, uh, there's a really good man beating route on both the X and the B route. This looks like a man based on the fact that these cornerbacks are in so far. So if you throw in the break, you can have some very good success against man coverage. The best setup for a play like this, though, is pick a side, put one of the tight ends on a streak, and then put the other tight end on a drag. It really doesn't matter which direction you go, but I do feel like the B route is probably the best against man. The best against zone is probably going to be the X route, which is a slightly different look. We have a zone coverage here, so I'm going to do that. I'll block my running back, although that's fine. You can leave him in that. That's fine. That's a good play as well. That was a cover three. You can see if it's a cover three, the streak's going to be the, we're going to be the read. Typically, that's not meant to do anything more than just pull coverage back, but on this particular play, if it's a cover three, he'll be the read. If it's a cover two or any man coverage or anything like that. Like this here, we have a man coverage, so I'm not going to mess around. I'm just going to go ahead and throw it up to Devontae Smith, although he didn't really beat that coverage too well. Uh, you can see how that's a very good man beating. Uh, but I don't know why they keep bringing all these safeties down. That's why I kind of forced that. The A route, though, is a very good check down. You can see here we get a man coverage once again. I didn't feel like waiting for the deeper route to develop, so I just take the man coverage. So it's really that simple. If you get a cover two, though, which I haven't really gotten, that's going to be a play where you read the A route versus the X route. I don't know. It looks like I have a cover three here. Like I said, I can get that X route, even against cover three. You can see that beats it outside. I don't think that was a man coverage. That's just a very good uh, corner route for pretty much any man or zone. Let's go on one more time. I'm hoping to get a cover two here. Let's see if we get that outside route again, and we're just basically you know lobbing it up and, and making a very good play. I had to manually select a cover two just so I could get that look. But you'll see how the X route here just splits the safety in the cornerback uh, once the drag gets across the field. But wow, really, that route, that X route really beats anything. Next up, we get the halfback stretch. It's so another play. You can really go in either direction with the right stick. It's going to give you a lot of success. If you want to bring an additional blocker, but at the same time kind of give away what direction you're going, you can motion across one of these tight ends. You can see it also brings a defender with it. So this is not necessarily my preferred way, but sometimes it's better to have additional blocking. As you can see right there, we had a pretty good run. I like to run it as is. I like to mix in this motion because I do have a lot of plays where I motion out this uh, this, rece or this receiver. A lot of one-play touchdowns. Uh, typically, though, if I'm going to do that, I want to motion it away from the run play because I want my opponent to think that's the direction I'm going. And then this is going to be a much better angle that will catch my opponent off guard and make it a lot easier to run. Next up, we got the halfback wham. This is just a good run in Madden. It's been that way for a long time. You can flip the play with the right stick, although realistically you have to flip it by flipping the entire play. So I did flip the play here, you can see, because I definitely have a bigger hole in this direction. And this is essentially going to act like a trap play where we can get a lot of success, just as long as we're aiming towards whatever hole we see. Now here we don't have a hole at all, but this will still work. You'll still see that this can blow open some uh, some creative space as long as that first block gets a piece of the defender like he did there. So ultimately, while you know my only real suggestion would be to run this play away from any extra box safeties, like we have a box safety on the left side there. Here we're just going to go out, we're going to run in this direction again, and we should have success. It's like I said, it typically will create a hole, though there I didn't really go through it very well. But at the end of the day, this is a very good run. Here we go, we'll flip the play one more time. We have a hole on the one side, and you'll see how this will create uh, some very sustainable run lanes to run through throughout uh, the entire game. Next up, out of the deuce close, we have the halfback zone week. This play here is really going to be best against anything except for cover four quarters or cover four drop because in those defenses, the safeties typically play up. That might have been a cover four, and I still had success there. That was about a six-yard run. Here we have a cover three safety in the box on the other side, so I'm going to take it outside away from that. And like I said, you can run this wide as well, uh, even though it does kind of angle towards an inside run. If they don't go outside, you can really take it outside for big runs. Next up, we got the PA boot slide. 
There's another play where I'm just going to put the A route on a streak uh, and block my running back. This is pretty much all i got to do. The A route's going to pull everything back, and then I'm pretty much just going to play the crosser, which here is going to be my check down as well as my man beater. Then I'm going to play the, uh, the corner receiver and the running back, which is pretty much going to be all my reads. I don't really make a read with the A route, but at the end of the day here, uh, when I meant running back, what I meant to say was uh, the, the crossing Y route. That's typically like a running back's route, but it's actually a tight end. So I could see there, that was his own coverage, and we really just played the high-low routes across one another. As you can see right here, I mean, that's a man coverage. I could just basically, that's all I could do. I mean, I was under pressure right away. Next up out of the single back deuce close, we have the PA X post cross. Against cover two, all you have to do is put the B route on an out route and then smart route at about 10 yards. It's going to be best to motion this guy out. Um, and this will be uh, the best way to score a one-play touchdown with the X route, who typically will go right up the center because the safety you can see kind of lags off towards the out route. This is cover two zone. You don't have to make the motion with the B route, and you don't need the running back. So you can just put him on a 10-yard out route, and the X route it will, will get going. Just bullet and pass lead up and away. As you can see, it's a very easy one-play touchdown against cover two zone. Against cover two, man has similar effect. All you have to do is put that B route on a 10-yard out route one more time. I guess I'll block my running back because I don't really need that. And you'll see you'll get the same effect from the safety just as long as this receiver gets past his, his cornerback. You can have an easy one-play touchdown once again. Next up against cover three. Against cover three, you're going to have to motion out the B route so that you can change the route to a comeback route. You can't do that from inside. Then you're going to put the Y route on a streak, block your running back, and this is pretty much going to be the play right here. You're going to see how the X route will get across the safety eventually, and the cornerback is nowhere to be found because he stayed home on that comeback route. Go ahead and I'll do that again because I don't feel like I timed it very well when it comes to the crossing route. So you'll see right here, it's that crossing route does get past the safety and we're getting another easy one play touchdown. Even with Buda Baker, superstar in coverage. Against cover four, that's regular cover four, uh, just make that same motion with the B route like you would cover three, put them on a comeback route, put the Y route on a streak and you're gonna pretty much have the play right here. You're just gonna have to wait until this uh, X route crosses this last safety and then you can see how you can get it out over the cornerback who's still biting on the comeback route. So we're gonna do that one more time. Block my running back, I don't know if I said that. I should have slid my double team one more time, but that's fine. And then you can see here, because it's only typically a three ran rush on cover four, you can get an easy one play touchdown over the top. Against cover three match, we're just going to motion out the uh, the B route again and basically just do the exact same thing. Although here you'll see how the cover four corner, I'm sorry, the cover four quarters coverage will get beat by the exact same route. Next up we have the halfback stretch. Here we go, this is one of your better outside runs. It's gonna be best if you got the outside edge. Like there, I really didn't have the outside edge. The, the cover three safety was kind of you know, hanging out out there. Here's the same thing. If this is the case, a lot of times motioning across the defender to try to regain that edge is best. Um, at least you'll have a blocker there. So now, even though I pulled another defender across, I do have an additional blocker, which will help me to get to the edge uh, and make it a little bit easier um, than before. You could also flip the play in the opposite direction if it calls for that. Here I have that outside edge, so I don't really want to do that. Although we do have a safety coming down. I don't know if it was a safety blitz or a cover of zero or whatever. Got a couple yards. That's fine. It looked like it might have been a cover four. Um, here, though, like I said, safety outside. I could just flip the play, go the opposite direction, try to take it to the edge once again. Not the best call when you're kind of on the short side of the field but those are your three options when it comes to running this play. Next up, out of the doubles flex with the inside cross. This play here really is just all about the two dragging check downs. One of them is going to get open. If not these guys, then the running back on the comeback route over the middle is typically going to be open. 
this is a flood the middle concept. You're really going to start with the drag routes, uh, but if they follow that, then typically the deeper route will be open. That's the, that's the, really the idea. Is those drag routes will clear for either the comeback route, which is the running back, or the deeper route to the tight end. One of those guys will be open. Here we have a double drag against man coverage. Typically against man coverage, it's going to win. Um, the drags will draw everybody's attention because the drags are going to be, they've been one of the hardest things to stop a man for a long time, and that's really going to pull the user a lot of times. A lot of times that will just basically leave the running back wide open, although there, I don't know why he didn't, uh, why he stopped. That could have easily been a completion, but this is pretty much going to be the play. Here we go once again. So you're watching the drags. If the user follows that, then you have a lot of other options, either the running back or the, the, the you know, the 10-yard in route. Next, next up, we got the inside zone. Just a good run play. It can really be run in either direction. Just flip with the right stick. Like right here, we got a guy right in the box. I think I'd rather take my chances that uh, you know they'll create a hole before I get to the next level. Although there, running into JJ Watt was not the best option. But at the end of the day, you could also, if it's a zone coverage, you can motion across the slot receiver. A lot of times, the defender won't follow. If it's a man coverage, they will follow all the time. But at the end of the day, you can see it's a, it's a good option is there. I mean, that guy came in hot, but I still got best. So definitely one of the best inside runs in the formation. Can really be run in either direction. I don't have to make any adjustments. I mean, it might be best run if I just run it as is. As you can see right here, we get a very easy play uh, as there's a hole right off the bat. Next up, we have the PA double posts. Start off with cover two. This play by itself is a really good cover two play with no adjustments because the B route here um, typically gets outside uh, if you throw that with timing. Also, that particular route does a pretty good job of pulling that safety across so I can just beat him up over the middle with this Y route. So I really don't have to make any adjustments when it comes to cover two. It's a good man cover one play as well, as once again the B route is going to cook it. And uh, the crossers are going to do pretty good too. I'll go ahead and I'll run it one more time. The crossing route should have similar success. Against cover one man, the B route once again is a very big play. Um, if you throw it with good timing, I mean, you can get up the field with that for an easy one play touchdown. Next up, we have the bench switch. So basically, the setup is going to be the same, but you can do it to either side. The right side works better against zone. The left side works better against man, and it's all because of what the B route and the X route are doing. If you look at the two routes, they are different. The X route is a better man coverage beating route, where the B route is a better zone coverage beating route. So here, you, it looks like a zone because the cornerbacks are so far off. It's not a man coverage. So I'm going to streak the A route, put the Y route on a drag, and you're going to see how the B route here will get open over the top of what I pretty much figured was a cover two zone, and it was. If it's a man coverage, they'll be a little bit tighter aligned, but you can really do that trick to either side. It really doesn't matter. I can streak the Y route and put the A route on the exact same play. I can say right here, you can see how this X route's going to get outside of it. I don't know if they've caught in bounds. This is a really good zone coverage concept. It really works against any man or zone. These outside receivers really can have success. You can see right there, we're getting in front of it. That looked like it might have been a man coverage. I'm not really sure, but you can really run this to either side. It really doesn't matter, and it'll have success against just about any man or zone in the game. Next up, out of the single back tight Y off, we have the drive flood. So I'm going to run this from the hash mark to the open side of the field, put the X route and the Y route on streaks, and then motion uh, the X route out. That's all I really have to do. The B route here will get open past cover three once the cornerback bites. You can see bites on that, that man beating out route for some reason. You get a very easy one play touchdown as long as you bullet and pass lead away from the safety. Let's go to the replay there just to see what happened. As you can see, this cornerback here, I don't really see why. I mean, the depth of the, the route doesn't make a ton of sense, but he bites on it, and we're going to take advantage of that. So like I said, the second he... The second he's basically even with him, I could throw it at any point in time, to be honest with you, which I could have threw about 5 to 10 yards earlier. And I guess I was, actually. You can see the quarterback already winding up. But yeah, I mean, it's really easy play. Against cover two, we're going to pick that, Tampa two. It's a very good play against cover two as well. I mean, as it's configured, there's a lot of good man being routes, but you can motion out the B route, streak the A route, and the B route will get open over the top of cover two zone on the outside and the inside. The streaking tight end has a lot of success as well. 
So let's go and let's do this again. Only this time we're going to shoot for that A route. Because the the depth of these uh, receivers, you can see he does get inside. I mean, I could streak. I could do a couple of things to create a little bit more space for the tight end. Typically, I don't really want to do that, though. So I'm just going to put the Y route. Like, if I want to get the tight end open up the middle, I have to basically pull back that other safety. And now you can see I can float that in between and safe catch it and stuff like that. But ultimately, it's a bigger play to the outside anyway. Against cover two man, it's going to be pretty similar as the B route here will typically get outside, although we got Goddard right up the middle beating that press. Next up, we have the halfback zone week. This is the best inside run on the formation, but it does have the ability to really bounce it outside if you want to. Uh, it's definitely a good inside run, though. It'll be best against cover two, cover three, uh, anything like that. Um, that's typically going to be your best look. Right here, we have an extra defender in the box. I'm going to go ahead and flip it with the right stick to the other direction, and we're going to have another good run. As this is a very successful run series. Next up, we have the jet sweep. These type of plays typically work best against man coverage, but you can have success against zone as well. This is just an opportunity to get your fastest guy the football. As you can see right there, that was definitely zone coverage. Didn't really have the most success. I'm going against random here. But any man coverage, like right here, this looks like a man or maybe even a cover four, should have success like this. And you can see, boom, we're getting outside of that. Typically, it works best against man because when the guy motions across, the man defender doesn't follow, where typically he would. If it wasn't a run play, he would follow, so there wouldn't be an advantage. That way, you always get this advantage here. Except with the halfback stretch. It's so another play. Uh, you can really run it either direction. I'm typically going to flip it and run it behind the receivers. If it's a man coverage, they'll take themselves out of the play. This was clearly a zone coverage. Probably should maybe should have went in the other direction there. But it's really up to you. It depends if you see anything on this side here, on the right side. If there's if there's no cornerbacks out there, then yeah, I'll run it that way. But since there are, I'm going to go ahead and flip it and go the opposite direction. It looks like we're getting a lot of zone coverages, but it's still one of the better run one of the better run plays in this formation. And I typically flip it and run it behind the receivers. Next up, we got the halfback zone week. It's a good inside run. You can run in either direction. I mean, I could flip it or I could just run it as is. I typically just find it's best to run towards the receivers, but it really depends on whether you're looking at a man or a zone. Like right here, if I flip it this way, I really don't have too good of a look. So to me, it's best to just always run it to the short side. You can see, especially against man coverage, the man defenders don't react very well to the run right away, and they're pretty much just running backwards while I'm just chasing down where they left. Here, though, you can see there's there's some space and opportunity outside, so I can really try to take that advantage. You know, it's really your option. You can run it in the other direction, flip it with the right stick, and it's a very successful inside run or outside run. Next up, we got the PA boot. You can run this against any defense, and it's been that way for a long time. Just put the A route on a streak, the Y route on a drag. I like to actually motion across this receiver and put him on a slant to give myself an option going in the opposite direction. Especially since this goes about 10 to 15 yards where the deep crosser goes about 30, uh, more like 25. So really, if your opponent has their, their certain drop set to 15, another drop set to 20, I mean, one of them is going to get open is the point. I also have my dragging check down, which is also important. Uh, but this is pretty much going to be the play. As you can see right here, we're pretty much just going to be running it one side uh, from the from the drag to the deep crosser. It's really that simple. Now, like I said, having that secondary option as far as depth is important so i will take the time to motion this guy across so i can have something getting open at 15 yards if i didn't make that clear that the b route will get open about 25 so if your opponent sets their depths to 25 then you're going to want to hit the slant it's really that simple i'll go ahead and i'll do this one more time like i said this here you know this b route should get open against just about anything you see right there the crossers are covered better but i still got in front of that and made that play so crossers are much improved as far as their defense but they're still really hard to stop next up out of the wing pair we have the halfback inside zone This is your inside run. Uh, whether you want to flip it, because here we have a much bigger uh, hole to the right side, or you just want to run it to the left, because typically this formation will pull everybody um, in one direction. You can see right here, even that that uh, cornerback, or that, I'm not sure if it's cornerback or safety, but he kind of played down outside. If it's cover three, he's typically going to leave that spot. So right here, this is a perfect opportunity just to take this in the opposite direction, although he did a really good job of stopping me there. 
This is your best inside run on the formation. You can flip it with the right stick and really run in either direction you want to go. But you can see typically the direction design is going to be best. It's just a good uh, run to keep your opponent uh, balanced because the best run is going to be the outside run from this formation. But a lot of times you'll notice that that guard will double team and then get to the next level. And that's typically going to be your read. Now right here there's a guy waiting back there at safety. So I'll flip it. I'll go towards this hole, make him chase me, and I can still have a better chance for a good inside run. Next up, I have the halfback stretch. The halfback stretch can be run to the three tight end side, but ultimately I find it's best to flip it with the right stick and go to the side where there's nobody. And you'll see a lot of times because this formation really pulls everybody to the right, it'll be very easy to uh, to get some big gains. Now here you can see this guy here is coming down to the box. This is one of the few times if I run it like this, he'll probably just, you know, cut me off. So that's something if there's a blitzer or there's somebody wide outside there, it's not best to do that. In that scenario, you probably just want to run it behind the tight ends. But ultimately, Ultimately, I still find that a lot of times this left tackle can either get out and make a play to you know, pick up that block, or if you have a fast enough running back, you can typically out sprint them. But this is a much better look right here. You can see there's nobody out here. I'm just going to get um, you know, a very good uh, play pretty much every single time. It's really a simple read. And then last but not least, like I said, you can still run this towards the tight end side, but like I said, I'm looking for this type of look. Because of these three tight ends being so wide, typically, I, I really messed that up there. I really should have had a bigger run than that. But typically, because of these three tight ends, it'll pull the defense in, to an off alignment like this, and you'll pretty much always have the angle to either get outside for a positive run or a lot of times even bigger runs. If you do want to run that direction, like right here, we have too much too much guys on that side. I could always make that defense shift away by motioning this guy out. And now basically I'll have uh, that tight end you know, who completely missed the block. But you can still run to the tight end side and make that motion. So right here, you can see all the actions over there. I'm not going to go over there. And then we can see we got another very big uh, effortless run here going in the opposite direction. Very easy play. Next up, we have the Jet 6 Drive. Most of the passing plays in this offense are crossing the field, so it's good to have a, a, a you know change of pace to throw to the other side. Just put your B route on a streak, and this is pretty much going to be the read. The A route's a good check down, but the RB route should get open outside of most things. As you can see right here, I'm going to have the bullet, throw it up the field a little bit there. Most of these routes are crossing routes, like most of the passing plays in this formation go across the field. So it's nice to have a play where you can basically go outside the numbers. And that's what this play is going to be right here. The RB route here is going to get open against just about any man or zone because I'm going to streak this tight end to basically pull any coverage off of them. If I have a good running or good uh, route runner or fast tight end running this, it'll beat man as well. Um, I'm not really sure how well it'll work with Richard Rodgers, but you can see even there, he was open. So we have a route that should get open against just about any defense going in a completely different direction than typically I will be on this formation. Next up, we have the PA sprint halfback flat. This is similar to the previous play I showed in a different formation where I'm going to want to motion this guy in so he gets across the line quicker. And then I want to put either the RB route or the B route on a streak. It really doesn't matter which one, but I think the B route's probably best. Your man beater is going to be the X route. He'll cross the field faster now because I motioned him in. And then your zone beater is going to be the Y route and the A route. But it's really going to be three levels of passing, which is going to be really, really what makes this so good. You can see here that looks like a zone coverage. Tight end gets outside of it. The running back in the flats also a very good option, although there I just took the deeper one. Here we have another you know, all-out man blitz. I might not really go this route against a man blitz, but I know already that it's pretty much just going to be the A route here, which is another good man beater once again, or the crossing receiver, which which is really going to be your best two options against man. The tight end should really be, the RB route tight end should really get open against just about anything. It's not the RB route tight end, I'm sorry. It's the uh, the A route tight end should get open against just about anything, just as long as you throw it on timing. Like there, that was a crossbody throw. Didn't really do the best job, but it's still going to be one of the best routes. I also didn't you know, motion in my, uh, my check down, which is really going to be important. Except we get the PA tight end seam. It's another play where all I'm going to do is put the B route here on a drag, and we're pretty much going to be reading the high-low routes going across the field. Uh, that's pretty much it. Your comeback route is going to be a good check down. It'll be man or zone. But typically, if I call this play, it's the play off of all the running plays in this formation. I'm really going to hit the B route or the A route. And that's pretty much all I'm going to need to read for the most part, unless the user is Johnny on the spot. You can see right there. I mean, there's nothing really there. Like I said, if you're, if you're running the ball successfully, your opponent will have to bite down on the play action on the run plays. Next up, we have the PA X-Burst Cross. 
This play here is the easiest setup. I'm just going to put the B route on a drag. That's all I really got to do. And my crossers are going to be the play. If it's a man coverage, you'll see how the running back really doesn't get open. But the, the two crossing tight ends typically beat man coverage. The running back's really only going to beat zone. You can always put the B route on like an in route too if you find that they're colliding or getting too close together. But when you throw it to the running back, a lot of times that tight end crossing will turn into a blocker. So that's one of the reasons you want that there. So really easy read. You have your, your B and your A route should be just about anything, man or zone. Uh, like right here, we're just basically playing a levels game as the deep route gets forgotten in the crossers. It looks like it might have been a cover two. And you can see we're just basically working our way from front to back. Real easy read, though. If it's zone coverage, it's going to be the running back. If it's man coverage, it can only be the tight end or, the, or one of the two tight ends. Next up, we got the tight end attack. This is a very popular play. It was a meta play uh, in Madden 22. So I'm including it here, even though I never really used that play much there, and I'm not really going to use it too much in Madden 23. Uh, it's a very good play, though. The running back is one of the better options. Um, I don't know why he decided to run the route in the direction that he did. I mean, you can always put him on an out route in the other direction. I find that that's uh, a little bit more effective. But the A route crossing tight end, I know, is a very good play. Um, there's definitely a lot of throwing angles to the three tight ends on the side um, that you can always take advantage of. Like right here, you can see that uh, the tight end just slips right behind the zone, and you can have a lot of success there. And that, a large portion of that is because of this tight end pulling the routes. You can motion him out, too, to basically create more space for that. Here, it looks like we have an all-out man blitz. Um, which I typically wouldn't recommend running that too. But the A route here is a very good route, even though, you know, that whole play, I probably wouldn't run that against Man Blitz at all, to be honest with you, because you can see there's just so much going on there. But you can motion out this B route here, have a lot of success with that, and then you can see how that A route really clears the crossing route for the tight end, even though I have, a, I have probably my worst tight end running the second most important route. Next up, this thing about Wing Stack, we have the flanker spot. Start off with Tampa 2. This play can have success against Tampa 2 by streaking the B route. I'm also going to put the A route on a drag. You can block your uh, running back or you can just block the A route. It really doesn't matter because one, either the, the, the swing route's probably better to keep on the field, to be honest. But either way, the B route here can get over the top as long as you bullet and pass lead up. It's not the biggest window, so it's something that I could understand that some people might struggle with. But you can easily win with that route plays much better against cover three sky against cover three sky i'm just going to put everybody on streaks and motion out the rb route and this will basically once the the x route here gets to a certain point you see the cornerback just bails and if i get a good catch and run i can actually have a very easy one play touchdown there but i didn't really get the timing that i want so i'll do that one more time like I said, this is something that once that cornerback bails, I can throw it right away. There, I actually got hit. But you can see, it gets open right at the seam. It's very possible to get a one-play touchdown if you have a quick enough pass, a fast enough receiver. Against man coverage, I find it's best just to put the A route on a drag. The B route should typically get outside of man coverage pretty quickly, just as long as you bullet and pass lead away. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. This play is going to be best flipped and run behind the receivers. This is how I typically find I like to run it. Uh, typically, you'll just get a better blocking. I don't find, I find the wider the blocking, the better, not necessarily the better the blocker. So here you can see, I mean, if I run it behind the tight ends, this is not a bad option. You can see right there, I mean, I do actually get a better run that time. But ultimately, it might be best to mirror a lot of the passing plays and motion out this tight end here to see that it'll basically just create a little bit more space to the edge before you hike the ball. A very good run play. Like I said, you can run it in either direction. It's a very consistent play. You could also motion across one of the tight ends if you want to make sure you clear this edge. Like right here, that defensive end's out kind of wide. If you want to make sure you clear that, motion one of these guys across. Now, if you motion the outside tight end across, you can see it brought across the defender. If you motion across the inside tight end, a lot of times it won't. Although here it did, sometimes it'll just, if it's if it's linebackers that are covering that way, then they won't actually uh, motion anybody across. But this is a good bread and butter play. It can really be run in either direction. And you can have a lot of success. Typically just trying to sprint your defenders to the outside to have a very big run. Next up we have the halfback zone weak. This is just one of your better inside runs. You can flip it and run it to the tight end side if you see a hole in that side, but ultimately it's going to be best to just run it uh, in the direction that it's it's basically going. You can even out the formation, and if you're running it against man coverage or zone coverage, typically by motion across one of the tight ends, you'll just get a blocking advantage. Nobody will follow, and then you can see how you can have a lane right up the middle.
This defense is especially good against man cover too, or this play rather, um, as a lot of times you'll just basically get a uh, delayed reaction. You'll, the, the, the man defender doesn't come across. When you motion across with the receiver, the man defender stays home, which immediately gives you an advantage. Typically this tight end can do a pretty good job of sealing this block as well. And you just have a very good run up the sideline against with typically what can be your fastest player, like I'm using here with Watkins. Looks like we got some updates for the PA fork. We do the whole thing. Cover two. Guess against cover two, you don't really need any adjustments, but you can make some adjustments to make this a little bit easier. As you can see, there really isn't too much there, but if you want to put the RB route on a 10 yard out route, that will help to create more separation. As you can see now, I mean, we just have nothing but space right up the middle there. It's also best to streak the, uh, the B route. Or is it the B route? I'm not sure if it's the B route. Yeah, the B route. Or the fade it, rather. It's better to fade the B route. And then, like I said, put that tight end on that out route once again. And like I said, there's nothing but space here. I mean, that's just as wide open as you're going to get. Although, I didn't get a very good catch and run animation. I still probably scored a touchdown. But cover two is very easy. Works against cover two man the same way. Exact same setup for cover two man. As you can see, the X route is just gone. Um, once again, not getting the best catch and run, but still, same exact same thing. And it's cover three, you just have to motion this guy out, put him on a comeback route. That's going to be the best way to do this. And then we're just going to wait for this X route to cross. And you can see a huge amount of separation. Probably the same as the original, to be honest. Next up, we'll do cover. We'll do cover one. Pretty much going to be the same setup, although you don't have to do anything with the tight ends. You can see how the the X route here crosses. Although I didn't get a didn't get a ton of time. Probably should have blocked the check and release. Probably would have got more out of that. But you can see it still beats cover one man the same way. Next up, we'll do cover zero. See here, that get the most separation yet as they're just, you know, they're just getting each other's way. It's just, a, it's just an easy concept. Some of you use a, a lot of stack formations. It says as the, uh, you know, as they, as the receivers and the and the cornerbacks get each other's way, they just bump each other off and they just create separation for the streak. And this pretty much happens every single time you have overlapping routes like you have here with the B route. Although there, we didn't quite get that animation. Like I said, sometimes you'll get it better than others, but you can still see we've got enough separation for the for the pass. It's just um, sometimes it's much more pronounced. Like there, as he was wide open again. Although I got sacked once again. You should I could easily be blocking the tight end, but you know, not necessary. And the X route's gone too, so it really doesn't matter. Next up, we'll choose cover four. I think it's the only defense we didn't do. So I'll just put these guys in curls. Curls are for the girls. And we got another one play touchdown. So all you gotta do is curl the tight ends. Very easy play. And then once again, I forgot to say fade the, fade the B route one more time. And that X route is gone the second he gets inside the safety. Just bullet and pass it up. <clears throat> Next up, we'll do regular cover four if I can find it. So I'm going to motion out Goddard again, put him on a curl or a comeback route, put the A route on a curl, put the B route on a fade. Pretty much going to be the play here. And then that X route here will get over the top of that safety. Although that was pretty close. I mean, it's cover four, splitting right up the middle. It's going to be a tight window. Make sure you have your fastest guy there. But another one play touchdown against cover four regular as well. Next up, we have the PA fork. We'll start off against cover two zone. 
Put the B route on a streak, put the RB route on a 10 yard out route. That's a five yard out route, then smart route it. And you'll see how this is all you really need for a successful play. The running back can be blocking. I don't need to do that. But you can see how this guy here will get across the safety. And because of the out route, the other safety will be nowhere near to make play. Works the same against cover two. With the exact same setup, I'm going to block my running back. And you can see here, just as long as you have enough time, once he makes that break, you got an easy one play touchdown against cover two man or zone. Against cover three, all I'm going to do is put the B route on a streak and then put the RB route on anything just so I can motion them out and I'm going to put them on a comeback route. This is pretty much going to be the play. I'll leave the play action in because I find that it slows the pass rush. Whether that's true or not, I really don't know. But you can see right there it had success. And then as long as I wait for him to cross the safety, I can have a very big play because once again, the cornerback is being held down by the comeback route. You can also have success against cover four. Against cover four, you can do uh, the same setup with the comeback route. And we'll basically have the exact same uh, success. So we'll basically leave everything else the same. So we're going to have plenty of blocking because this is a cover four, only three guys rush. Once that X route crosses, you can see how you can have success over there. I probably should have hit the... the Against cover four... You can have the same success with that comeback route and that streak. We really just have to wait for this X route to get across the safety. Once he does, you can see it's a very easy, you know, the the, the safe the cornerback's gone because it's still covering the comeback route just like in cover three. Also has a lot of success against cover four match. Same setup as regular cover four. Got that comeback route activated. And then that uh, cornerback just gets cooked and the safety doesn't have enough time to turn around. So you can basically throw it right as it gets inside. I'll go to the replay real quick. But uh, yeah, basically wait right when he gets inside. You can see how those two, the cornerback and safety over there jammed up. This one here, he doesn't really react. He just gets right over the top of them. Next up we have the smash. Start off with cover two. It's pretty good cover two play just like it is. Just put the X route on a streak and that's all you really have to do. The B route here will get open over the top of the cover two cornerback outside of the safety. Uh, it'd be a very easy play because they're going to react to the, the streak. The streak is really pulling everything back and the drag is going to hold that cornerback down. Gets cover to man. Do the exact same setup. The drag and the crosser will still work, but this outside route here is going to work the same as well. Pretty much everything will get open against just about every defense. Against cover three, we're going to pick that again. Cover three is going to work very differently. I'm going to put the RB route the A route and the X route all on streaks. And this is going to be the play right here. The X route here will eventually get uh, forgotten, as you can see right here. I mean, he really just, the cornerback just takes off after the corner route there. I don't know if I'll get a one-play touchdown. I feel it's best to probably put the X route on a fade so that he's a little bit further from that cornerback. As you can see here, once that cornerback leaves, you can just bullet pass that side. And I'm just not getting the catch and run animation I want, but you can see that it's there. Next up against cover four. Go ahead and pick up for a drop. You see that this route can get open outside of it. Next up against cover four match. Quarters. 
I find against cover matches best to just do the exact same setup and motion the B route out. I don't think cover four quarters really do a great job in man coverage by themselves, and you can see you could easily have some success doing it like that. That really would work against a lot of different zone coverages. Against cover four regular, it's going to be the same setup. You're going to motion him out. Get him in that one-on-one -on -one with that cover four outside cornerback. And then basically just throw in the break. As you can see, you can really just muscle that in there. Uh, maybe better to wait a little bit. Go ahead and I'll do that again. Just give it a little more of a second. I mean, the check downs are always going to be there with the crossing and tight ends. But you can see, I mean, this is something that if I throw that on timing, the cornerback can't react quick enough and you can basically beat him outside. Next up, we have the 26 duo. This looks like it's an inside run, but in reality, it's an outside run. It's kind of something where you can really do either or. Like here, I could take it inside or I could bounce it to the outside like a stretch. So it's really a two read play. Typically, you just want to run it away from any extra defenders in the box, any box safeties. But you'll see you pretty much always have that hole and you always have the option to take it outside wide. Next up, we get the halfback belly weak. This is essentially a counter run, um, but you can see how, you know, you have a pulling blocker, which in a lot of counter runs you don't have. So this one here, it's almost like a trap play mixed with a counter, but typically that counter block or that pulling block could do a pretty good job as a lead blocker, although in the first play you really didn't get out in front. You can motion that block across. You can see there, it didn't even make it all the way across. It got picked up, but it still picked up the guy that was cutting in. So a very good running formation and a very good running play. Sometimes the hole will open up right over the middle, too. It's not always an outside run. This is a unique play because of the way that it pulls. You get a lot of different openings in a lot of different places. If there's a hole right in front of you, though, just take it. As you can see, I mean, there's just, you know, this is a very well-blocking formation because of all the tight ends. Next up, we have the halfback zone weak. It's going to be your best inside run from the formation. I find running inside is probably a little bit better this year than running outside at the moment. So this is going to be a very important run. You can see right there, uh, you just want to be patient as you're going through the hole, um, and you'll typically get some pretty good uh, pretty good separation. This is going to be best off your opponent spreads the defensive line to try to stop the outside run, uh, like the stretch run from this formation. Uh, anything else? You can see right here we have a big hole right at the middle. It's just going to be most successful inside run. Next up, we got the mesh. This player really works against just about any defense in the game. The drags are really key. The Y route is typically going to be the best drag out of the two because the running back will pull back any uh, zones in the area. Typically, like the roll in the direction of the Y route as well. A lot of times, it'll either get the user to follow or um, even better, it'll get the comeback route in the middle of the field open. Next up out of the single back wing tight, we have the, where is it out of here? <clears throat> the PAFL stretch. It's another good man zero play. So I'm just going to block one of my tight ends on the right. You don't want to block the Y route. I'll show you why. The Y route pulls whatever man cover cornerback is in the area. It's also a good check down. But if, that, if he's not running that route, and I'll show you this time, you'll notice that the man coverage guy in that area will essentially drop back and be a safety, which I don't want because I'm going to be attacking the receiver anyway. Put the X route on a smart route and block the A route. That's all I really got to do. Cancel my play action a little bit quicker so my running back can block for me. And then you can see how this guy out here really gets right over the top of the cover corner, although he kind of slowed down to catch that ball. But if we go to the replay, you can see how the cornerback just stops, which is something that is not really going to work out for your opponent. Like I said, he just stops and waits to get beaten. If I had got a better throw, as you can see here, he didn't really get a good catch and run. He kind of had to slow down for that ball. Would have been an easy touchdown. So we'll go and we'll do that again. Like I said, just put this guy here on a smart route, block the A route. And you can see, once again, the cornerback just stops and it's a very easy one play touchdown against pretty much any man zero. Next up we have the PA Flood. 
This is going to be a really good man-beating play to the tight end. Typically, the tight end will beat man, and the running back will beat zone. It's really that simple. There's not a lot of other really great options on this play, but the tight end and then the running back. Like I said, the tight end here is a really good option against man. Next up, we have the sluggo seam. This route is really designed to be a man cover one beater. I'm just going to put the B route here on a drag, give myself a check down, but you'll see the pump fake and the sluggo route typically have a good combination of success. It's typically a one play touchdown if you have a fast enough receiver. Next up out of the single back wing tight, we have the stretch alert X looky. If it's a man coverage, it's best to throw it because it'll typically beat the one on one. Even if it's a zone coverage like there, it's kind of playing off, it'll have success. But if it's a zone coverage, you're going to want to typically hand it off and run outside. You can see here, you're going to have a lot of success. There, I didn't even take it all the way to the edge. I took it up inside a little bit. Next up, we have the halfback inside zone. Gonna be your best inside run you can flip this with the right stick in either direction just basically try to hit uh whatever whatever gap you can find um I'm, I'm along the line really this is gonna be best against cover two zone cover two man uh these are cover threes even cover threes this year because i noticed cover three is better as a defense outside now so maybe even this year cover three might be best to run up inside pretty much anything other than cover four because cover four is typically going to be where uh, the safeties come down and try to stop the run. So a good inside run, but it's really going to be best against spread defenses. This here looks like a little bit of a spread defense. Uh, we should be able to get that look here. And you can see we're going to pick up about five. But the outside runs are still the most explosive runs in this formation. Next up out of the wing tight U, we have the halfback stretch. This play here, uh, you can really run it to either side. I would say the short side with the receiver is typically the best side. It's going to be best run against things like cover four and man coverage. That was a cover three. And cover three this year, you'll see a lot of times these safeties will drop down outside to take with his outside run lanes. Um, but still very good run. You can stay here. I mean, that guy just kind of beat him outside, and we have a very good run. That was probably a cover two. It looked like a cover two zone pre-snap. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is a very good run play. I find if you're going to flip it, you could always motion across one of these tight ends. It might kind of give away where you're going. But the extra blocker is definitely helpful, and it will definitely spring you out to some more big gains. Although right there, you can see it kind of left me short on the backside. Still an option, though. Motion across one of these one of these tight ends, especially if you're running into a cover three, which once again, this looks like a cover three. Go ahead and motion this guy across again. I should help me to get to that edge this time, uh, which, like I said, I think it's going to be key in Madden 23 because they do a very good job of, of coming down on those lanes. You can see right there, he would have made it there if I didn't motion that guy across. So in cover three zone, it's especially key. Here we go once again. It looks like we have another cover three. It's especially critical against cover three zone this year to have a guy to basically block up this guy here. You're going to watch. He's going to shoot down on that uh, on that block there. He didn't really didn't really finish it, uh, but you can see it's still uh, able, maybe able to get outside and get a bigger play. Next up, we got the PA boot slide. On this play here, I'm just going to put the A route on a streak. I'm going to block the running back because I don't want that formation, um, or that animation, rather. This play right here, I'm going to put the A route on a streak, and I'm going to block the running back so I don't have that uh, fake handoff animation uh, because that really kind of gets in the way. Uh, it's really going to be, to me, between the A route and the, sorry, not the A route, this, this outside route and then the two route levels lower beneath it. Uh, typically, the Y route will be good on the flats against like cover three, cover four. If it's a cover two, the B route is going to be great. Uh, although it should get open against a lot of different things. You can see right there, like there was a cover three cornerback in the way last time. This is going to be like an all-out man blitz. So I'm probably going to get in some trouble here. But we have our man beaters, which is typically going to be the crossing receiver. It's best to actually motion this receiver in if you think that man coverage is coming like it was there. Uh, basically, just motion this guy in so he'll get across the formation a lot quicker. But this is pretty much going to be the play. We've got another man coverage. Like I say, he's way across that uh, cornerback that time because I motioned him in. It's going to be the best look. And then that's pretty much going to be your reads. Against uh, zone coverage, the B route and the Y route will be your looks. Against man coverage, will pretty much be the X route. I don't like that uh, animation, though, so I'm going to keep canceling that. Looks like we might have that cover, too. As you can see, he's right open over the top of that for a big play. Put your fastest tight end there because that's definitely going to be better. The other route, the A route, is really just to pull back to the zones. Next up, we have the PA Jet Sweep. It's another good play against cover one man. The uh, stop and go route will have a lot of success as long as it's cover one man. I don't really think a lot of other defenses are going to have success with this particular play, but that particular one works very well. Next up, we have the Verts Drag. This is going to be a very good play against cover two. 
Against cover two, just put your Y route on a drag and your A route on a streak. I'll block my running back. Put my X route on a slant just for a check down uh, because ultimately the drag isn't really meant to be a check down. It's really just meant to pull the cornerback down so you could throw this over the top. Having a faster tight end of this spot is going to be important. You could also motion this tight end out. Gives it away a little bit, but ultimately it will get the tight end up the field a lot faster for a bigger play. As you can see here, he just gets behind the cornerback a lot quicker that way. But like I said, it's a little bit of a giveaway. Have your fastest tight end at this spot. Next up out of the single back Y off trio, we have the halfback stretch. It's another good run play. If you have the outside edge where the tight end is, just run it as is, and you'll have your best opportunity to bust an outside run. If you don't have that, you typically want to flip it with the right stick. It's that simple. Like here, we don't have that. There's a safety in the box. We'll just go the opposite way. We should have plenty. Like here, well, once again, we do have that extra defender on the weak side. So we'll go ahead and run to the strong side. It's really that simple. You just basically want to get outside and sprint get as much as you can. Like here, the defender, the extra defender's in the box on the other side. We're going to go the opposite direction. We could cut it inside, or we can just take it all the way uh, to the edge and have a very big run that way. Next up, we got the fullback dive. This is probably your best option to run the ball in the opposite direction, although I didn't change out my fullback. Typically, you want to put in a running back um, that is uh, you know, a little bit faster. But ultimately, you can see how you can basically cut across the defense and have a lot of uh, opportunity if the defense is too um, you know, spread or shifted in the direction of the strong toss or the stretch play that's also in the series. So if that's the case, you just basically hit him with this, go in the opposite direction a little there. You can see he just shot right in as I'm going against random defenses. That might have been a blitz. But at the end of the day, this is pretty much going to be your best um, you know, run to the opposite field, and it's a very good play. Next up, we have the halfback dive. It's the best inside run, nothing too crazy, but you're going to need an inside run since most of this formation is outside runs. So this is something that you want to keep in mind and you want to keep in your audibles at times. You can flip it and run to the opposite side. I find the blocking might sometimes be better running it that way as there's less people in the way. I find that's kind of uh, helpful because when you run to the traditional way, it just seems like there's a lot of crashing bodies. I really find it's best to flip the play and run to the other side in a lot of different run plays for whatever reason. But here we go. We'll do it again. Like I said, we see we have some bodies there. It's not the most explosive run. It's a consistent run, but like I said, you need an inside run to go with some of the outside runs. Next up, we get the halfback stretch. This play here can only really be run one way, but a lot of times based off the alignment, you will get the edge out here, uh, whether it's man or zone. A lot of times if it's zone, uh, the defender might drop back anyway to the point where you can still kind of get the edge. So this is definitely a good run play. Um, some of the other plays in this formation are going to be best if you see something like this where there's really not an outside angle. So this is really something you can only use in a look that has one of two things, either a man coverage where both of the cornerbacks are in front of the receivers or anything like that. I mean, this is decent because the cornerback's back so far, so you should have an opportunity to get to the edge and your blocking setup before you run it. But if there's too tight of a box defender outside, it's just a waste of time. Like if you have a, a box defender, this even here looks like it might be a little bit tight. Um, as you can see, I mean, I'm still having success. It's a very successful run, but if there is a defender down at the line of scrimmage inside the box, like this here might be a little bit, might be pushing it a little bit. Like the blocks might not set up and it kind of stretches you out. In that scenario, you're probably gonna wanna take it a little bit shorter up the field. But ultimately, this is something like right here. This is not a good look. I'll go and I'll try to run it. This is something where I'm probably going to run into a one-on-one -on -one a lot quicker than I want to. And it's still not going to be the, as successful as it can be if they're playing off. Like, this is the look I was talking about. There's no cornerback out here. So this is going to be the best scenario to basically just hit the guns and take it to the sideline. Either this or the cornerbacks are playing back uh, to the point where it's like they're not really in the picture. Like, right here, we have that defender once again. Can probably stretch this out. But, boom, you can see it's, it looked like more like a cover one safety than a cornerback. So he got caught up inside the garbage you can take it outside for a very easy and explosive run next up with the halfback toss stretch is probably better run as a whole but this particular toss run is not bad it's a good play to mix in it's probably going to be best against man coverage once again or once again defenders like being far back like this this is something where i can have some success um, it's the same look. If there's somebody tight to the line or in the box, it's going to be hard to get around them. But if they're playing back, like right here, we have two defenders over here. I probably could have ran that a lot better, to be honest with you. I kind of messed that up. That was something that could have been a much better run. 
but uh, I want them either playing back. Like, we are getting two blockers out here. You can see, once again, like that. Kind of crisscrossed them, and I didn't have enough speed to get going. But it's still a very, you know, all the toss plays are typically a good run. Here we have that guy down in the box, like I was saying. That's something that I'm, I'm, I don't feel like I'm able to get around too easily. Here we go. They're playing kind of back. Like I said, I typically have two guys to block the two guys. Um, and then maybe I just don't have enough speed. But you can see him having successful, uh, consistent runs. Next up, we have the PA boot slide. Motion out Goddard here, put him on a 10 yard out route, and this will give you the best opportunity for the B route to ultimately get open right up the center of the field. Although I do want to cancel that play action because you can see how that messed up the timing. I wouldn't say, to me, it's not best to cancel the play action completely by putting it on a, a run block. I'd say canceling it by hitting the right trigger makes the most sense this year. As you can see, we get another big play, although for whatever reason, it's like he's slowing down to catch the ball, uh, but still a very explosive play. Next up, we got the post shot. Against cover two, you really don't have to make any adjustments, but I'm going to motion this tight end out just to pull that safety away as much as possible. Uh, and that's going to give me my best opportunity for an explosive one play touchdown. As you can see, he just comes in over the middle, and we get a very easy uh, play up the middle with that. With no real adjustments other than a motion. Against cover two, man. Against cover two, man, motion this guy in, put the B route on a streak, and then put the A route on a 10 yard out route. I'll cancel my play action about halfway through, and then the X route here, you'll see be a very explosive play, just as long as you have a fast enough receiver. He's only on 91 speed, but if he was a little faster, it'd probably been an easy one play touchdown. Okay. Next up out of the week close flex, we have the PA boot shot. We'll start off with cover two. I'm gonna put the X route on a streak, then I'm gonna put the A route on a 10 yard out route block. Uh, the tight end, I don't really need him doing that. And this is pretty much going to be the play as the B route here can split the safeties. Uh, just as long as I get a better catch and run animation than that, you can see it's a very easy one play touchdown. But well, I'll do that again. Like I said the Y route really doesn't matter. I mean, I can leave him there as a check down. I just don't really need it. And then you can see how as long as I bullet and pass lead up and get a better catch and run, or maybe you have a faster receiver, you get a very easy one play touchdown splitting the two safeties. Against cover two, man. Against cover two, man, I mean, I can go max pro. Uh, because the fullback doesn't beat man coverage, but it's pretty much going to be the exact same setup. You'll notice that the B route gets an inside release, and uh, he's going to be gone pretty quick, as long as I get that pass out there. Once again, maybe not a one-play touchdown with this receiver, but you can see how he gets right up the middle for a very easy play. Now, what gets really exciting is when you get to cover three. So let's go and do that next. Against cover three, we're going to block the tight end. We're going to streak the Y route, the fullback. That's all we're really going to do. Cancel my play action so he can pass block a little bit better. And then get some protection. And you can see how this guy here gets right over the top as the cover three cornerback is held down by whatever that funky route is going across the field. You can see here that the uh, the Y route's what's pulled to safety back. I'll block my running back this time. Uh, just watch that, that, that streaking route. And you can see it does enough, like right there. I mean, I had to throw the ball a little bit earlier than I wanted to, but it still did enough to get him over the top. This is really one of the glitchier routes in the game with the X route as far as what it does to the cover through cornerback as far as holding it down. That's not a very common route, but you can see the success it has in pulling that cornerback down and making it a very easy one play touchdown over the top. Works the same against cover four. Let's we'll go over to a dime. Against cover four, all you have to do is block the tight end. That's all you have to do. And it'll have that exact same effect. Might have to wait a little while for that guy to cross that corner, but you can see a very easy one play touchdown against cover three and cover four. Also has a lot of success against man coverages, but that should be pretty obvious. So let's go ahead and let's switch over to a cover one hole. Against cover one hole, I mean, I really don't have to do anything. Uh, the fullback, once again, doesn't really do anything. The X route, though, is a very good route. I don't want to lose that for a one play touchdown, but you can see very good man beating route. 